All of a sudden, Damon heard people laughing in the woods not far away. It sounded like two or three people. A man was cackling and then several other voices chimed in. It kind of sounded like a party. Damon felt surprised. He hadn't expected anyone else to be out here. The mountain behind the school was usually deserted. Furthermore, the weather hasn't been great lately. Sitting around outside wasn't very comfortable. And then there were the brambles and the insects to contend with as well. Damon decided to creep over towards where the sound was coming from and see what was going on. It was dark out, and Damon's footsteps were very light. Plus, whoever was out there sounded like they were busy having fun, so they probably would not notice him. Damon stopped when he was about 10 yards away from them. His eyes were keen enough to see clearly at this distance. Now that he was closer, Damon smelled a pungent odor. Were they smoking weed? Damon could see three people sitting together in a small clearing. They were passing a joint around. The group appeared to be made up of two guys and a girl. Damon squinted his eyes to try and make out their features. What he saw shocked him. One of them was Drew. Was that really the guy who was pursuing Veronica? Drew had seemed like such a straight-laced guy on the surface. Who would have guessed that he toked? Damon recognized the other two people too. He had seen them at Veronica's birthday party. The guy's name was Tyler, and the girl was Chelsea. The three of them were completely stoned. They laughed and chatted loudly. Drew said, Damn it, I don't know why Veronica won't date me. Tyler chuckled and said, Yeah, I've never seen a girl turn you down before. What's wrong with her? Drew also laughed. <laughs> don't worry, I'm going to teach her a lesson. No one turns me down. Tyler replied, Oh, really? What did you have in mind? Drew hesitated and then he said, Veronica is such a goody two-shoes. Everyone thinks she's perfect. Makes me sick. Well, when I'm done with her, people won't think she's perfect anymore. What are you going to do? Asked Chelsea. I'm going to plant coke on her and make sure that the police find it. She will get arrested and it will go on her permanent record. A resolute look flashed in Drew's eyes. Tyler said, When are you going to do it? Tomorrow is Friday. You should do it then. There's going to be a big party tomorrow night. It will be the perfect time to do it. Tyler laughed evilly. A look of hesitation flashed in Drew's eyes. Tyler ridiculed him. Drew, don't back out on your plan now. It's the perfect opportunity. After being egged on by Tyler, Drew nodded. All right, I'll do it. I'll ask her out tomorrow. Damn it, if I don't teach her a lesson, she won't know who she is messing with. Suddenly, they heard a sound from the underbrush. Drew was shocked, and he called out. Who is it? Chelsea and Tyler were also shocked. They asked in trembling voices, Is, is someone there? Tyler said, Quickly, get your stuff and let's get out of here. So the three of them grabbed their things and ran off. Damon, who was still hiding in the darkness, was very upset. Of course, he knew who Drew, Tyler, and Chelsea were talking about. Damon had tried to quietly take his phone out of his pocket so that he could record their conversation, but his arm had brushed against some dry leaves and they had heard him. He had not been able to record anything before they all ran away. Fortunately, Damon now knew what kind of person Drew was. Although he had always disliked Drew, he had not expected Drew to be so malicious. What made Damon even more furious was that Drew was willing to ruin Veronica's life just because she wouldn't date him. The thought of it was unbearable. After Damon had calmed down a bit, Damon began to formulate a plan. Regardless of whether Veronica was interested in him or not, he did not want to see anything bad happen to her. He had to keep her away from Drew, especially tomorrow. If Drew really framed Veronica and got her arrested, it could ruin her future. Damon would never allow such a thing to happen. Damon wished he had been able to at least snap some pictures of the three of them smoking weed. If he had, he would have some proof to show Veronica. Without proof, he was afraid that Veronica might not believe him. After all, it would be his word against Drew's. Damon thought about the conversation that he had overheard the entire way back to the dorm. That night, Damon kept tossing and turning. He couldn't fall asleep. Even in his dreams, he dreamt of Drew and Tyler. After getting up, Damon washed his face, brushed his teeth, and went to class. Damon had a hard time keeping his mind on his classes. Finally, he was done with classes for the day. Originally, Damon had been planning to take the day off work from the radio station, but in light of what he had overheard last night, Damon decided to go to the station to see Veronica. When he arrived, Veronica was about to start the show. Damon called Veronica softly from the door. Veronica heard Damon's voice and quickly turned her head. 
A look of surprise flashed in her eyes. Damon, did you come to co-host the program with me? Damon was too embarrassed to say why he was really there. Perhaps Veronica would believe Drew's word over his. Damon nodded his head in reply. He wanted her to think that that was why he had come. Veronica smiled sweetly and did not ask why Damon had shown up today after all. While the two of them were co-hosting the show, Damon thought about how to tell Veronica what he had heard. If all he said was that Drew was not a good person, Veronica might not believe him. Damon needed to stall for a time so he could come up with a plan. He could not let Veronica go out with Drew today. What excuse should he use to delay Veronica from meeting Drew? Should he try to invite her out to eat? He had tried to take Veronica out to eat before, but she rejected his offer. The probability of her rejecting his offer again was even higher. But aside from inviting her out to eat, he could not think of any other ideas. Should he ask to borrow books from her? This was a good idea. He could say that he wanted to study that evening. Damon knew Veronica's personality. She would definitely agree to lend him some books. Now that Damon had made up his mind about what to do, he could concentrate on work. Before he knew it, their half an hour long show was over. Then, Veronica started tidying up. She was preparing to leave. Just as Damon was thinking about when would be a good time to ask her, he heard footsteps in the corridor. Then, Drew walked in. Drew was dressed up today. His clothes looked even better than usual, and he had some sort of product in his hair. On top of that, he was wearing cologne. He had walked over and stood in front of Veronica. Even Damon had to admit that Drew looked more charming than usual at this moment. Sure enough, Veronica's eyes also lit up. She smiled and asked, Why are you here? Drew smiled charmingly and said, Ronnie, do you remember the friends who I brought to your birthday party? One of them is celebrating his birthday today, so... Damon knew what Drew was going to say before Drew finished his sentence, so he anxiously interrupted. By the way, Veronica, can you lend me your copy of Financial Philosophy? I need to study for class. Drew was furious. He hated being interrupted. Even Veronica felt that Damon was being impolite. She nodded to Damon and then said to Drew, What were you saying? I want to invite you to the party. Drew didn't want Veronica to get the wrong idea, so after a moment he added, don't worry, we can go as just friends. Everyone already knows that you are not my girlfriend. Veronica thought for a moment, then she turned to Damon and said, What happened to your book? I saw you with it yesterday. Damon shook his head and said, Someone tore out the last hundred pages of my book. Can I borrow yours to read? Afraid that Veronica would refuse, he continued, I'm kind of in a hurry. Can we go get it now? Drew was so angry that he swore at Damon. Damon, what's wrong with you? You are deliberately looking for trouble. Can't you see that Veronica is busy? Drew had been unhappy with Damon for a long time, and now Damon dared to spoil his plans. If it wasn't for the fact that he was worried about what Veronica would think, Drew would have punched Damon in the face. Veronica was in a dilemma. She thought for a moment and then finally decided to help Damon. She seemed anxious. She said to Drew, I'm sorry, I have to go and help Damon. How about next time? Drew was anxious. Veronica agreeing to come to the party was part of his plan. He needed her to come with him. Ronnie, don't ditch me. I promised my friends that you would come. Besides, it's just a book. His problem is not that serious. Veronica shook her head and said, Drew, Damon really needs my help. Besides, I don't even have a gift for your friend. We can go and buy a gift later. No need. I think I'll set this one out. Drew's expression turned ugly. He was thinking about how much he hated Damon. But he still wanted to try and convince her, but Veronica had made up her mind. Drew looked at Veronica in dismay. Well, all right then. After that, he watched Veronica and Damon leave the radio station together. Drew's eyes flashed with a vicious look as he took out his phone. Veronica and Damon took a shortcut back to the dormitories. The sun was setting and its red glow lit up the clouds. The light of the setting sun shone on Veronica's delicate face. She was holding her books with both hands. The light from the sunset shone on Veronica's waist-length hair. She looked incredibly beautiful. Damon watched Veronica's back as she walked in front of him. He could not help but feel pleased that his plan had worked. Even if Veronica wasn't his girlfriend, he still couldn't let Drew ruin her life. Veronica and Damon walked quietly all the way back to the dorms. Veronica didn't speak, and Damon didn't speak either. When they arrived at the girls' dorm, Damon sat down at a bench to wait for Veronica to go upstairs and get the book. 
but Veronica stood there without moving. She gave Damon a strange look. Damon felt a little uncomfortable when Veronica looked at him like that. He said awkwardly, Veronica, can you go get the book? I need it urgently. Veronica said softly, I can get you the book, but financial philosophy has only 95 pages. Damon was stunned. Veronica did not look like she was joking. He did not know what to say. He had never felt so embarrassed before. Damon had a copy of Financial Philosophy, but he had never flipped through it. He did not know how many pages it had. However, he was more embarrassed about being caught in a lie. At this moment, Damon could feel Veronica's piercing gaze. His lie was well intended, but it required countless other lies to be believable. Veronica had known all along that the book was just an excuse. She knew Damon had an ulterior motive. Damon hoped she wouldn't misunderstand his intentions. As stoic as Damon was, Veronica seemed to be able to see what he was thinking. Although Damon's IQ was extremely high, he was at his wit's end. This was the first time that Damon's special talents had let him down. He knew that even if he came up with another lie, Veronica would still see through it. This girl was as smart as a whip. Continuing to lie to her would be pointless. Just as Damon was about to tell her everything, Veronica spoke. You don't want to see me and Drew together, right? Damon looked at Veronica and saw that she had a strange look on her face. Since you don't like it, then I won't hang out with him anymore. After saying this, Veronica waved goodbye to Damon and walked up the stairs to the girl's dorm. Damon watched Veronica's beautiful back as she walked away. Her waist-length hair fluttered in the wind and her skirt swayed gently with her gait. Damon felt conflicted. Veronica's words had been so casual. In his mind, he kept thinking about what Veronica had just said. If you don't like it, I won't hang out with him anymore. It seemed like an ordinary sentence, but it had come out of Veronica's mouth. Damon had had a crush on her for as long as he could remember, and when he heard her say these words, his heart beat faster. Did she really care so much about his feelings? Really? But then, Damon remembered how Veronica had acted with the handsome man on the street the other day, and he remembered that her heart belonged to someone else. Reason told him that he was probably overthinking what she had said. There were many ways to interpret her words. After all, Damon had a blind spot when it came to thinking that girls he had crushes on were interested in him. However, even so, it was still hard for him to brush off Veronica's words. Furthermore, Veronica was smart. She probably knew that Damon had a crush on her. She should know her words would put ideas in his head. But in the end, Reason told Damon not to give it too much thought. He should just be grateful that Veronica wasn't going out with Drew tonight. Furthermore, judging from what Veronica had said just now, it was likely that Veronica and Drew would not be hanging out together anymore. Damon felt more or less relieved by this thought. At the same time, Damon felt elated about what she had said to him. Her words had warmed him like a sunny day. The next day was Saturday. Damon had just gotten up when Liam called. Liam excitedly told Damon that a certain Spanish exchange student had planned a grand romantic gesture for Avery. The Spanish guy was organizing something in the Rose Garden at the Meyerson College of Music. Liam wanted to know if Damon was interested in going to take a look. Damon's heart skipped a beat. He thought to himself, this girl that I once liked is going to be asked out by someone else. He had heard Carly mention this guy before, but he hadn't expected the guy to make his move so soon. Damon didn't want to see it, he refused Liam's invitation. Even though he was with Fiona, he didn't want to see Avery with another guy. He didn't even ask Liam to wish Avery well for him. He just wanted to ignore the situation and pretend that it wasn't happening. Meanwhile, in the girls' dorm at the Meyerson College of Music, Avery was tidying up. She had been a very clean person ever since she was a child. She was airing her bedding on the balcony and her laundry was neatly folded. Everything smelled fresh and clean. Her books and musical instruments were arranged in a proper manner. A bouquet of flowers sat in a vase on the table. The sunlight shone in through the open window. The room looked very cozy. Just as Avery was finishing tidying up, her phone rang. Avery picked up the phone. It was her grandpa calling. Avery answered the phone. Immediately, she heard her grandpa's hearty laughter on the line. <laughs> Good, Avery, what are you doing? Do you miss your grandpa? Grandpa, I'm cleaning things up, Avery said. Her grandpa had been calling her every day and it was getting kind of annoying. Avery already knew why he was calling. 
Oh, but don't tire yourself out. Make sure you rest when you need to. Avery's grandpa was beating around the bush. Avery knew he had another reason for calling. He finally got to the point and asked, Grandpa had something else to ask you. When are you going to talk to Damon next? You should bring Damon over to the house. Avery replied somewhat helplessly, Grandpa, you have already called and asked me this more than a dozen times this week. I know. When I have time later, I will ask him if he wants to come and visit. Okay, okay, good. Avery's grandpa was overjoyed. Then he said, Avery, don't blame Grandpa. You know, I just want to return the favor. Damon saved my life. I think that Damon is a good guy. Your father likes him too, Avery muttered. Grandpa, why are you saying all this? Grandpa laughed even more heartily and said, <laughs> I was thinking that you and Damon would make a good couple. He is a good boy with good character and he is well educated. It doesn't matter whether he has money or not. After all, he can earn money in the future. What's important is that he has great morals. Avery was so angry that she stomped her foot. Grandpa, you are not allowed to speak nonsense anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Then just remember what I said. He was afraid that his granddaughter would get angry if he continued to tease her, so he said goodbye and hung up the phone. After getting off the phone, Avery thought about what her grandpa had said just now. She frowned slightly and looked at the sunlight shining in through the window. Her mind was somewhat out of sorts. Brianna, who was combing her hair, looked at Avery and could not help but laugh. <laughs> Avery, what are you thinking about, your beloved? Avery blushed and pouted. Nonsense. Carly, who was playing computer games on her bed, looked over and gently said, Our Avery still doesn't have a sweetheart. Brianna nodded and said, Then Avery, what do you think about Dario? I heard that he has something special planned for you. Dario was an exchange student from Spain. He had come to the Meyerson College of Music to study classical music. He had had a crush on Avery since first year. Now, he was planning to officially ask her out. Apparently, he had something big prepared for Avery. He had enlisted a large group of friends to help him. He was planning to set up a big display with all kinds of flowers, candles, and even fireworks. It was extremely romantic. Dario would do whatever it took to convince Avery to go out with him. Although Dario hadn't put his plan into action yet, news about it had already spread on campus. Everyone at the Meyerson College of Music had heard rumors about this romantic plan. Dario and Avery were both influential figures of the Meyerson College of Music. Everyone was interested in what they were up to. Moreover, people have been speculating about them for a long time now. Some people said that Avery would definitely agree to date Dario, but others said that Avery was too proud to go out with someone like him. It wasn't just students at the Meyerson College of Music who were speculating. Apparently, students from other universities were talking about it too. In short, the Avery-Dario drama was causing quite a big commotion. Avery shook her head. She didn't know how she felt about Dario's plan to ask her out. Actually, she didn't really take the matter seriously. She knew Dario. They had classes together. She had heard that he was from a prominent Spanish family. In the Middle Ages, Dario's family had even been honored by the Spanish royal family. They were given a royal title, something usually reserved for nobility and knights. Even now, the family was still considered part of the noble class. They were very well off. Moreover, Dario was quite handsome. Otherwise, he wouldn't be as popular as he was. However, Avery didn't have any interest in him. She didn't think about him much at all. Seeing Avery's carefree expression, Brianna gloomily said, Avery, don't tell me you were going to reject Dario's request. Actually, I think Dario is a great fit for you, Avery said. I don't know what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm quite conflicted. Brianna blinked and said, Avery, you don't want to be single for your whole life, do you? Did she? Even Avery herself was not sure. Carly was still sitting on her bed. She hesitated for a moment, then she asked, Avery, have you been in contact with that high school classmate of yours recently? Before Avery could say anything, Brianna said with a smile, it must be spring. Carly is thinking about guys again. Do you know what I mean, Avery? Ever since Carly met that classmate of yours, she hasn't been herself. Do you know why? Avery looked at Brianna doubtfully. Brianna said with a smile, I think she's lovesick from thinking about him. Carly was so angry that she jumped up from the bed and chased Brianna around the dorm. I told you not to talk nonsense. I told you not to talk nonsense. Avery smiled. 
When she recalled the time on the bus when Carly had carefully asked her about Damon, she couldn't help but smirk. After playing for a while, Carly and Brianna finally stopped running around. Brianna smiled and said, But Avery, in all honesty, your high school classmate is not so bad. If he is single, why don't you ask him if he's looking to meet someone? If Carly isn't interested, then I am. I quite like guys with heroic spirits. Avery nodded vigorously. Oh, don't worry, I'll help you ask. After they finished joking around, the girls in the dormitory quieted down. Avery listened to the music and flipped through some magazines about popular new musicians. Carly and Brianna had seemed like they were joking, but they were actually quite serious. Avery thought about this, and she thought about what her grandpa had just said on the phone. Then, Avery suddenly had another thought. She thought about how Damon used to look at her. She thought about the look of silent frustration and disappointment on Damon's face when she had rejected him at the party back in high school. Why did I do that? He wanted me and I rejected him. Now I want him. But what if he rejects me? Wouldn't that be what I deserve? What if he doesn't want me anymore? Avery thought for a while, and then she took out her phone to call Damon. Damon, who was busy in the dormitory, was quite surprised when he received Avery's call. Avery asked Damon if he had time tomorrow night. She wanted to ask him some questions about writing lyrics. Although Damon's career as Ryan Gold was over, he was still very skilled at songwriting. Even someone as talented as Levi had benefited from his guidance. After Damon agreed, Avery hung up the phone. She felt satisfied. Sometimes one needs to be brave and take a step forward. Back at Meyerson University, the guys from dorm 502 had just finished lunch. Xander was listening to music with his headphones. Ever since he had broken up with Riley, he had been very depressed. Hector, on the other hand, was very happy. He was immersed in playing games. Quinn was taking a nap. Recently, he had been busy working several part-time jobs and he was very tired. Ever since his father had passed, he had been supporting not only himself, but also his sister and mother. Quinn's younger sister was still in high school. Quinn had to take care of his entire family. At this moment, Theo suddenly flung open the door and ran in a panic. He said, Xander, quickly go and take a look outside. I think Riley's in trouble. Riley? Xander snapped out of his daydream and asked, What happened? Theo shook his head. He looked very anxious. I don't know. It seems like she's having an argument with someone. A man. He's yelling at her. I'm afraid that he's going to hurt her. Xander didn't stick around to listen to what Theo said next. He put on his coat and ran out. Damon and Theo were afraid that Xander would be at a disadvantage, so they hurriedly followed him. When they arrived outside the girls' dormitory, they saw a circle of people standing around. A beautiful, brand new Lamborghini sports car was parked at the curb. It was probably worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. A guy and a girl were arguing about something. Then, the man suddenly stretched out his hand and grabbed the girl's arm. He shouted, my private life is none of your business. Get it through your head or we are finished. The girl had tears streaming down her face. The man was being rough with her. She stared blankly at the guy and finally said sadly, Andy, I'm your girlfriend. How can you be so heartless? I am not heartless. I just don't want you interfering with my private life. Suddenly, a girl rushed out of the dormitory building. It was Riley's good friend, Zoe. She wanted to help her friend, but Andy stopped her. Zoe pointed her finger in Andy's face and said, Don't think that just because you are rich, you can do whatever you want. Let go of Riley. If you don't, we won't let you walk out if you're alive. Andy let go of Riley's arm. He lit a cigarette and sneered. I want to see who dares to try and stop me. Damn you! With a furious roar, Xander finally broke through the crowd. He rushed over to Riley. With a concerned tone, he asked Riley, Are you all right? Why are you here? Who asked you to come? Go away, I don't need your help. Xander had not expected Riley to react like this. He had thought she would be grateful to see him. Xander and Riley had been together for a period of time. Everyone knew that. They had broken up because Riley was cheating on him. Xander turned his head and stared at Andy. He clenched his fist. You grabbed Riley, didn't you? Why did you grab her? Andy puffed out a smoke ring and said very arrogantly, Why do you care? This is between me and her. She's my girlfriend. It doesn't have anything to do with you. If you are mistreating her, then it is my business, Xander roared. He was so angry that his veins were bulging out of his forehead. He cared about Riley. Andy's words had undoubtedly touched on something. Xander's anger shocked Andy. He wanted to teach Xander a lesson, but when he looked around and saw that everyone was staring at him angrily, 
Andy felt terrified. He said to Riley, Riley, if you want to make it up to me, come to my place tonight. If you don't, we should break up. After saying this, Andy pointed at Xander and said angrily, You don't have the guts to do anything. You're just standing there waiting for me to make a move. After saying this, Andy got into the Lamborghini and drove away. The people who had been watching gradually dispersed. Zoe came to Riley's side and said, Riley, don't cry anymore. It's not worth crying for this kind of scum. Zoe, thank you. Riley started to walk away, but Zoe would not let her. She asked, Riley, where are you going? Riley turned her head and smiled sadly. I'm going to Andy's. Where else can I go? If I don't go find him, he'll break up with me. Riley, where is your backbone? That guy is trash. He beats you badly and you still want to be with him? Zoe was angry with Riley now. How could she go crawling back to Andy? Zoe was very disappointed in her. Why was Riley so eager to please Andy? You don't understand. I can't live without him. Tears flowed from Riley's eyes. She pushed Zoe away and tried to leave again. No! Xander suddenly rushed over and looked at her anxiously. Riley was beautiful, even in this sorry state. She had a sad look of desperation on her face. Xander said anxiously, Don't go to his place, please. I want you back. I love you. I will treat you like you deserve to be treated. We can put the past behind us. This was Xander's promise to Riley. It was also the first time he had confessed his love to her in public. His expression was unusually persistent, as if he was trying to convince Riley that he could live up to his word. Riley's eyes lit up for a moment, but they quickly dimmed again and she shook her head. She said, Xander, you are a good man. Thank you. Why are you so determined to be with that guy? Riley smiled a sad but firm smile. I'm sorry, Xander. I want stability. Andy can provide for my future. She cared more about money than her dignity. The reason Riley had tried so desperately to get into an upper-class circle was that she had no choice. She would do anything to stay there, even if it meant crawling back to Andy. Not many people truly understood why Riley was so motivated by a desire for money. Few people knew about Riley's family. On the outside, Riley looked bright and beautiful. She seemed to fit in with all the other girls at the College of Music. But in fact, Riley was from a poor family. Her parents struggled to stay employed. Riley's family had spent all of their savings to send her to university. Her family was proud that she was a student at the Meyerson College of Music. Riley's family lived in a small, rural town. Riley had never been out of her hometown before she came to the dazzling metropolis of Meyerson. When she arrived at university, she had felt like a poor and ignorant country girl. She envied her classmates with their designer clothes and fancy iPhones. She desperately wanted to have that high-end, luxurious, and elite lifestyle for herself but there was no way she could afford it. Her ambitions were big and she had been born proud. So in the end, she decided she would do whatever she had to do to fit in. Her path was not glorious, but it was effective. She mingled on the periphery of the rich kid crowd and she worked hard to find a sugar daddy. She had once thought that Xander was her soulmate, but in the end, she realized that Xander was not as wealthy as she had thought he was. At most, Xander's parents were just middle-class folks with good jobs. Riley wanted a guy who owned property. Currently in Meyerson, real estate was worth a fortune. Riley wanted a guy who could afford to buy her a house here. She didn't want to spend the rest of her life paying off a mortgage with Xander. Compared to Andy, Xander was just a speck of dust. Xander couldn't even take Riley to watch a concert. Getting concert tickets hadn't been a problem for Andy. His father was a major shareholder of a certain powerful company. Besides, Andy's ride cost enough to support Xander's parents for the rest of their lives. Xander gritted his teeth. Riley, don't you trust me? Really, you have to believe me. I will give you a good life. I believe that I will be capable of earning enough money to support you after we graduate from university. Riley shook her head. Xander, thank you, but do you know how much Andy's Lamborghini cost? It cost half a million dollars. That's a serious chunk of change. Xander's jaw dropped. He was speechless. Riley did not want to hurt Xander's pride. She did not come out and say that Xander would never be able to afford that car, even if he saved for his whole life. However, Xander was not stupid. He got Riley's hint. Xander did not know what to say. Why had he even bothered trying to get her to stay? What right did he have to ask her to stay? 
Riley did believe that they could have a happy life together. It just wasn't the life that she wanted. She didn't want to be poor anymore. She just wanted to sit in that Lamborghini, even if it cost her her dignity. As long as Riley married Andy, she would never have to worry about money. At least her future would be secure. If Riley and Andy had kids, those kids would have lots of opportunities. Riley would never have to worry about rent or car payments. Xander would probably have to get his parents to co-sign a mortgage with him if he wanted to buy a house. In the end, his life wouldn't be easy. Even though self-reliance was a virtue, Riley cared more about living comfortably. In short, although Xander was a nice guy, Riley didn't see a future with him. I'm sorry, Xander, you have to let me go, Riley said. Then she turned and left. This time, Xander and Zoe let her go. No one could stop her. Riley was too determined. Xander stood helplessly and watched Riley leave. Damon and Theo, who were standing nearby, saw Xander crying. Xander had always been strong, but this was a lot to take. His dignity had suffered a heavy blow. He must be beating himself up inside. Riley had chosen Andy over him, and Andy treated her horribly. Even though Andy did not treat Riley with respect, she still had chosen him over Xander. It was a crummy situation. Theo hesitated for a moment, then he finally walked over and patted Xander's shoulder. He said, Don't be sad. I believe in you. You will be successful in life, and she will regret her decision. Xander shook his head and sighed. It's too difficult. Theo got angry. Come on, pull it together. How many of the richest men started from scratch? Don't be embarrassed about who you are. You deserve better than her. Yeah, you're right. Xander said sadly. It was clear that he didn't really believe this. Do you want a drink? Let's drink and forget about her. I'll go buy some beer. We won't rest until we get plastered, Theo said. Xander suddenly realized that he did really need a drink. They went to the liquor store and then headed back to the dorm. Theo passed Xander a beer and said, Drink, drink until you pass out. Then he cracked one for himself. Do you want one, Damon? Damon nodded. Hector stopped gaming and excitedly ran to the store to buy a case of beer too. Although he still remembered the wicked hangover that he had had last time, he wanted to party with his friends. While he was at the store, he bought a bunch of snacks too. He took all his goodies and rushed back to the dormitory to join the party. When Hector got back, Quinn was just arriving too. Damon, Theo, and some other friends were all sitting around drinking. The dormitory was full of people. Seeing that there was not enough beer for everyone, Damon got his wallet and said, Everyone wait for me, okay? I'm gonna get some more drinks. I'll grab some pizza too. No one goes anywhere, okay? It's okay, Damon. I've already got my shoes on. I'll go back out, Hector said. He had just come in the door, but he grabbed Damon's wallet and went back out in a hurry. In less than half an hour, he was back. Hector returned with several more cases of beer, a stack of pizza boxes, and another big bag of chips. He put everything on the table in the middle of the room. After that, he sat down and cracked a beer. Everyone ate and drank and laughed together. Xander drank more than anyone else. Before long, he was drunkenly crying. Quinn put his arm around Xander and said, Don't cry, don't cry, she's not worth it. Then Quinn stood up and tousled Xander's hair. They were good friends. Quinn knew what it was like to hit rock bottom. He could relate to how Xander was feeling. He even generously gave Xander the password to his account for streaming shows. It was already past two o'clock in the morning when the party ended. They had a class together in the morning, but they knew they would be in no shape to attend. They decided to play rock, paper, scissors to decide who would go to class to take notes for everyone. Whoever lost would take one for the team. After one round, Quinn lost. Quinn had no choice but to set his alarm so he could wake up in time to go to class. Immediately after, they all fell asleep. Quinn's alarm went off a few hours later, and he got up and walked out of the dormitory. Sometime later, Damon's phone rang and woke him up. He looked at the clock and realized it was already late afternoon. He had slept all day. It turned out that the call was from Avery. She was calling to ask which building Damon's dormitory was in. She had personally come to find him. Damon had forgotten about their plan to meet and discuss her lyrics. Damon told Avery the address of his building, then, he put on his clothes and prepared to go downstairs to wait for Avery. That's when Damon suddenly heard hurried footsteps coming from the hall. Then, Damon saw a guy named Ralph run into the dorm. Ralph lived in the dorm next to theirs. He said in a panic, Quick, 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 go downstairs. Quinn was caught by some thugs on his way back from classes. He's being beaten badly. Damon jumped up in shock. Where is he? Outside the building. Look out the window. Ralph pointed to the window. Damon looked out and saw that there was indeed a lot of people gathered outside. 
Damon could see someone in the middle of the crowd being pushed around. Lots of people were standing around watching. Was that Quinn being pushed around? It must be. Who else would it be? Damon heard loud cheers. Hector, Theo, Xander, wake up! Damon shouted loudly. Then he rushed downstairs alone. Damon's shouting had woken Xander, Theo, and Hector. They did not even take time to get dressed. They put their bare feet in their shoes and rushed downstairs. Ralph hurriedly went to the other dorms to get more people. Damon was the first to run out of the dorm building. He saw that many people had gathered on the road in front of the building. By now, Xander, Hector, and Theo had caught up with him. Walking shoulder to shoulder, they went up to the back of the crowd and started pushing people aside. They heard the sound of people fighting. Someone was howling. It sounded like a fierce fight, but they could also hear a girl's terrified voice. The girl said, Andy, hurry up and tell them not to fight anymore. If they keep beating him, they will kill him. One of Andy's friends said in a rough voice, Damn it, this loser still dares to fight back. Why won't he just stay down? Another guy said arrogantly, Show him who the hell is in charge. Let him know who owns this campus. When Damon and the other guys from Dorm 502 finally made it to the center of the crowd, they saw a group of guys surrounding Quinn. He had been beaten badly. Quinn's face was covered in blood, but he was fighting back with all his might. He had been knocked to the ground, but he kept getting back up. Andy's friends were punching and kicking him. Andy, the same guy who had been rough with Riley yesterday morning, had brought his friends back to campus today to cause trouble. They had caught Quinn coming back from classes and were now beating him up. Were they doing this to get revenge? Besides Andy, two other guys were also attacking Quinn. A group of fashionable young people surrounded the fight. From time to time, the spectators would cheer. Obviously, they were all friends who Andy had invited along. However, Damon did not see Jonathan in the crowd. Jonathan and Andy were usually together. Jonathan was probably still in the hospital, recovering from his injuries. However, Damon did see another familiar figure. Was that Drew? At this moment, Damon noticed Drew leaning against an Audi parked at the curb. Chelsea and a few other handsome guys were standing next to Drew. They were watching the fight too. From their expressions, Damon could tell that they were all part of the same group. Damon had no time to think about what to do. He saw Quinn being beaten by Andy and the others. Quinn barely had the strength to fight back. Damon instantly flew into a rage. He grabbed a guy with a buzz cut who was closest to him and punched him twice. Damon was very strong and he grabbed the guy by his hair. The guy's hair was so short that Damon was holding him basically by his scalp. The poor guy took two punches to the gut. Damon pulled him up again by his scalp and the guy cried out in pain. Andy was fighting the most viciously. It was as if he had a vendetta against Quinn for something. Damon kicked away the guy with the buzz cut and sent another kick right into Andy's back. Andy rolled on the ground for a moment in pain before getting back up. By now, Xander, Theo, and a few more of their friends had caught up with Damon. They did not show any mercy to Andy's gang. They all rushed forward and attacked the rest of the guys who had been beating Quinn. Damon quickly turned around and helped Quinn up. He asked with concern, Are you all right? Quinn wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and said stubbornly, Don't worry, I'm fine. I don't go down without a fight. At this moment, the rest of Andy's gang noticed that Damon and his friends had arrived to help Quinn. Many of the people in Andy's gang gasped in surprise. They probably hadn't expected anyone to come to help Quinn. Drew was especially surprised to see Damon. Drew already hated Damon. When Drew saw Damon, his expression became extremely ugly. Andy and the others who had been knocked down got up. When they saw that their attackers were Damon and Xander, they smiled. Hey, losers, we've been waiting for you guys. We are going to teach you a lesson. When he saw that the people who he had been waiting for had arrived, Andy signaled to his group of followers, and they all ran over and surrounded Damon and the others. At this point, Drew joined the fight too. He walked over to join the group surrounding Damon. Damon saw that Quinn was hurt pretty badly, so he felt relieved to see Andy's gang turn their attention away from him. Damon looked at Andy, who was casually smoking a cigarette, and said, Let's talk. How do we solve this problem? Xander and the rest of Damon's friends were a little nervous. After all, Andy had more people on his side, and everyone in Andy's gang looked tall and strong. They looked like they knew how to fight. However, Damon was not only calm and composed, but he also looked confident. When Damon's friends saw this, their nervousness disappeared. They all admired Damon's courage. Damn it! Andy was angered by Damon's confident attitude. He stared at Damon and was about to attack him, but then Ralph arrived with backup. 
he had gathered more guys from the dorms upstairs. Now Damon's side had more than 20 people in total, and Andy's only had seven or eight people. The guys from the dorms immediately surrounded Andy's gang. Theo personally knew a lot of guys who had just arrived to help. When he saw them, he became more courageous and shouted, Come on, guys, get them! Which of you dares to attack us? Drew roared. His imposing manner, coupled with the sight of the luxury car behind him, made him look quite dignified. The guys from the dorms were really intimidated. After stopping everyone in their tracks, Drew looked directly at Damon and said in a deep voice, I didn't expect you to fight back. Damn it, do you actually think that you and your friends stand a chance? You can fight us if you dare. Let's see who laughs last. Drew's words shocked Andy and he asked, Drew, do you know him? More than that, Drew said through gritted teeth. He was furious. The surrounding people immediately realized what was going on. Drew had had a grudge against Damon for a long time, but Damon did not care at all. Drew didn't scare him. He said, Oh, I'm waiting for you here. If you have the guts, come and fight me one-on-one. -on -one. This ends today. Don't even think about leaving. After saying this, Drew took out his phone and started to call more friends for backup. Damon's friends felt a little afraid. Drew and Andy were very popular. Not only were they rich, but they were also very well connected. They could probably get a lot of people to come and help them fight. When Xander saw this, he made up his mind to call for backup too. After all, he had caused this situation. No matter what happened, he had to stand up for his friends. Andy also began to make phone calls. Theo started calling as many people as he could too. The onlookers were getting worried. This was going to be a serious brawl. No one called campus security though. Instead, they stood around excitedly waiting to see what would happen. A huge fight was about to take place. University life could be so exciting. Both sides had called for backup. The atmosphere was tense. Xander, Theo, and Hector were all still on the phone, trying to get a hold of more people. They could not afford to lose this fight. Quinn did not have any more friends at the school, but he was not afraid. At least he wasn't alone anymore. He wanted to get revenge for what they'd done to him. Damon was the most composed of any of them. He was calmly smoking a cigarette. Damon did not want any of his friends to get hurt. He hadn't called for any backup. After all, the only people who he could call were Wilder and his gang. And they were real gangsters. Damon did not want to risk getting expelled from school for involving real gangsters in this brawl. If Wilder and his gang showed up, people would get seriously hurt. It did not matter how many opponents there were. Wilder would show no mercy. Then, Damon saw something that made him forget all about the fight. It was Avery. She was looking for him in the crowd. Avery's eyes were wide with surprise as she surveyed the scene. Likely, she assumed that the commotion had nothing to do with Damon. Would she believe that Damon was actually the instigator? Other than Avery, Jillian and a few other girls had also appeared. After all, they had been on their way back from classes, and the matter had caused quite a ruckus. Almost everyone from the surrounding dorms who was not in class had come out to see what the commotion was about. Suddenly, someone pushed through the crowd and a pretty figure ran over to Xander and said, Xander, get out of here. Do you want to die? It was Riley. Riley knew that Andy had a lot of friends at the school. Xander did not stand a chance. In the end, after the two sides clashed, only one would prevail. The weaker side would be left injured. In Riley's eyes, Xander was obviously on the losing side. However, Xander couldn't leave. His dignity was at stake. Plus, he cared about his friends. Even if the situation was hopeless, he still wouldn't hesitate to help them. Xander did not say anything to Riley. She turned around and started to beg Andy instead. Andy, Xander and I are finished. I don't have feelings for him anymore. I beg you. I beg you to let him go. If you keep fighting, you will kill him. Andy was very unhappy with Riley. He pushed her away, hung up the phone, and pointed at Xander. He said angrily, Hey loser, just you wait. I'm going to hurt you so badly that you'll wish you were never born. Neither of them had any intention of retreating. A fight was inevitable. People finished calling for backup and everyone was waiting for something to happen. Some people pushed their way to the center of the crowd to get in a better position. Xander, Theo, Hector, and Damon's other friends were mostly all skinny guys who wore glasses. The people on Andy and Drew's side were all handsome jock types who looked like they often hit the gym. The opposing sides were on totally different levels. The people Xander and Theo had called were friends that they gamed with. 
These were all loyal friends, but they weren't very athletic. On the other hand, the people Andy and Drew had called for backup all looked like they played sports. Some of them played basketball, and others played football. Many of them were at Meyerson on sports scholarships. They all had tanned skin and good physiques. They looked very athletic. Besides the jocks, some members of the student union had shown up too. They were important figures in the school. Drew had also called his buddies who were in the army. The people who were arriving to help were all very imposing. Between 50 to 60 people had arrived to help Drew and Andy, and more were still coming. When the countless bystanders saw these people arrive, they were scared out of their wits. After all, Drew and Andy had gathered some very important figures of Meyerson University as backup. By now, the situation was getting out of control. Andy and Drew had gained the upper hand. The newcomers were all standing around Drew and Andy. Drew said proudly, What do you think? Who dares to mess with us now? Yeah, we will make you pay. You are in charge, Drew. Just shout and we will follow your lead. The group of girls who hung out with Drew and Andy's gang looked at Damon's friends with contempt. A girl asked, Who is that? Why is he so bold? He actually dares to fight Drew and Andy? Another girl piped up, I heard that they're a bunch of losers who don't know their place. The third girl said, Is that so? Interesting. These guys must have a death wish. Then all these gorgeously dressed girls laughed. Drew and Andy each took out a cigarette and began to smoke. They looked cool and relaxed. Their friends all stood around, leaning against luxury cars and waiting for the action to begin. They shouted loudly and watched Damon and his friends with contempt. They looked sure that victory was within their grasp. The street was a powder keg. A fight could break out at any moment. Riley knelt in front of Andy. She said, Andy, don't fight. Please don't fight anymore. This had all started because of Riley. She did not want things to escalate. She couldn't bear the consequences of a violent conflict. However, Drew pushed Riley away. Get lost. What do you care if we beat up your ex-boyfriend? Open your eyes and watch as we teach these losers a lesson. The surrounding crowd of students from the dorms scoffed at Andy's rudeness. They didn't know what was going on, but they couldn't stand the arrogance of these rich kids. However, Andy and Drew had a lot of people on their side. None of the students from the dorms dared to say anything to Drew or Andy, but they were all secretly cheering for Damon's side. They wanted Damon to teach these rich kids a lesson. But then again, Damon did not have as many people on his side, and the guys on Damon's side were not as strong. The fight looked unfair. Behind the crowd, more people were sitting on the grassy hill watching. They were all waiting to see what would happen. Some of these people were old acquaintances of Damon's. The one at the front was Frank. He had his arms crossed, and he was watching the crowd. Alex and Emily were sitting behind Frank. Alex and Emily were both studying in Meyerson. Emily studied foreign language at a college. She did not attend the same school as Damon. Alex and Frank were studying politics and law at a neighboring university. They had come to see what was going on, but they had not expected to see such a huge crowd. They were even more surprised to see that one of the instigators of the fight was actually their old acquaintance, Damon. This fight was going to be great. Originally, Frank had wanted to join the crowd and support Damon. After all, Damon had helped them before. However, Alex stopped him. Alex really wanted to see if Damon could resolve this crisis. Additionally, the three of them had a conflict of interest. They knew Damon, but they also knew Drew. Drew was an old acquaintance of theirs as well. After all, they all ran with the same wealthy crowd. Since Alex had said to hang back, Frank no longer had any intention of joining the crowd. They all knew that Damon could handle himself. Andy and Drew's gang looked tall and strong. However, they didn't stand a chance against Damon. He would make quick work of them. The only thing that Emily, Alex, and Frank were worried about was that Drew was a sore loser. If a fight broke out and Damon really won, Drew would never let it go. Perhaps he would use other means to seek revenge. In the crowd, Drew was pointing Damon out to his cronies. Drew said, When the fight starts, focus on taking care of that guy. Beat him badly for me. Damon could see that Andy and Drew's backup had finished arriving. Although Andy and Drew had more people on their side, Damon, Theo, and Xander were not afraid. Damon finished smoking his cigarette and he threw the butt into the trash can beside him. He sneered and said, Is everyone here? Damon's confidence angered Andy and he said, You have a death wish. Andy's cronies who had been heckling Damon's friends also stood up and glared. They stretched their muscles and prepared to fight. Seeing that the fight was about to begin, Drew also stood up and threw the butt of his cigarette onto the ground. He pointed his finger at Damon and roared, Get them, especially the one I was telling you about. Beat him. Did Drew really think that he was so awesome? 
His roar sounded like he was commanding troops in a battle. The jocks rushed forward and swarmed Damon's friends. People were screaming from all directions. There were cries, roars, and cheers. For the first time in the history of Meyerson University, a huge gang fight broke out. Some bystanders even began to take pictures and take videos to upload on social media. Not only that, but some people even began to live stream the fight. Andy, Drew, and 50 to 60 of their followers all rushed towards Damon and his friends. Even Theo and Xander, who were usually very tough, turned pale. However, Quinn wasn't afraid. He was used to fighting. He wiped the blood from his face and rushed forward with a furious roar. Damon also roared. Damon threw the lighter in his hand into the crowd. The lighter flew through the air in an arc and hit a guy in the nose. The force of the strike was so great that it broke the guy's nose. The man screamed and fell to the ground. He covered his face with his hands to try to stop the blood flow. Get them, screamed Andy. Damn it, how dare you fight back? I'm going to make you pay for that, shouted Drew. Don't worry about getting in trouble with the authorities. If anything happens, I'll take responsibility for it. The sounds of fighting echoed off the buildings. Even though they were outnumbered, Damon's friends were not afraid anymore. Quinn was the first to charge forward. Damon was hot on his heels. They were the first to join the brawl. Theo saw Damon and Quinn charging. They were usually so passive, but today they looked fierce. Theo was proud of them. He waved his hand and said, Come on, guys, let's go. Let's avenge Xander and Quinn. We will make them regret ever messing with us. We will regain our dignity. Xander roared as well. I will show them who's the boss. The students from the guys' dorms were inspired by Xander's roar. They wanted to teach these rich kids a lesson. How could they sit back and watch these bullies beat up their friends? As long as they fought back, no one would think them cowards. If they didn't help their friends, they wouldn't be able to live with themselves. If they had any self-respect, they had to fight. So they all charged forward and joined the fray. The two sides clashed, creating terrifying chaos. People were screaming and cursing. Drew had instructed his friends to go after Damon, so a group of them surrounded him. Damon fought like a tiger. He threw punches left, right, and center. The people who Damon hit were in a miserable state. Damon knocked one guy down with a single punch. Then he kicked another guy's feet out from under him. The group of guys attacking Damon could see what was going on. They were shocked to see how good Damon was at fighting. They all tried to avoid Damon's blows, but Damon was too skilled. In only a short while, he had taken out all the guys around him. However, compared to Damon, his friends were doing much worse. Quinn took a few more blows from his opponents. The others were also fighting for their lives. Xander and Theo were tall and strong, but they couldn't compete with Drew's friends who were in the army. Ralph and the other guys who he had brought with him were not skilled fighters, and their stakes in the battle were not as high. They hung back near the edge of the crowd. Compared to the jocks and the guys from the army, the guys from the dorms did not know what they were doing. Damon fiercely beat up everyone around him until people started fleeing from his wrath. He looked around and realized that his side was at a disadvantage, so he roared, Everyone get behind me. We need to get in a better formation. Damon took the lead. He was a skilled fighter, and he was the one with the plan. The other students realized that Damon knew what he was doing, so they did what he said. They followed Damon and gradually formed a united front. They charged left and right in an orderly manner. On the contrary, Drew and Andy's gang was a mess. They had originally gained the upper hand by relying on their numbers and strength, but now Damon and the others had teamed up and were working together. In addition, Damon was really good at fighting. His fists were like iron. He was invincible and no one was a match for him. When the guys from the army saw Damon leading the charge against them, they were so scared that they turned and fled. Morale on Andy and Drew's side immediately weakened. The spirits of the students on Damon's side kept improving, and they beat Drew and Andy's friends one after another. The rich kids were a mess. Drew and Andy were the most pitiful of all. The two of them had instigated this fight. Damon wouldn't let them get away with it so easily. Seeing Drew and Andy retreating in fear, Damon rushed forward, grabbed Drew by the collar, and punched him. Quinn saw that Andy was trying to escape, so he grabbed Andy's hair and pulled it hard. Xander, who also hated Andy's guts, caught up with Quinn and began to beat Andy too. He wouldn't let Andy go so easily. One of Drew's friends was a black belt in karate. He was the best fighter on their side. He wanted to raise his group's morale and intimidate Damon's friends. He let out a strange cry. Then he said, Everyone come here and follow me. 
Before he could finish his words, Damon came over and punched him in the mouth. The guy who was a black belt fell backwards and landed in a trash can. He could no longer lead the charge. This fight was very exciting. The surrounding students were all riled up. They screamed and shouted. The fight was too awesome. They wanted to see the rich kids get beat up. These people were criminals and they deserved what they got. The fight was very one-sided. No one had expected it to turn out like this. People couldn't believe that the jocks and the army guys were losing the fight. The nerds and gamers were beating them up. It was awesome. Frank was watching the battle in awe. His jaw had dropped in surprise. He said, Damn, Damon is awesome. Emily was watching Damon with a smile. She was thinking about how much Damon had changed since she had first met him back in New York. Alex was watching Damon through narrowed eyes. He was seeing Damon in a new light. Jillian and her roommates looked at Damon in surprise. Who was this high-spirited young man? They were all amazed by his skill. He just kept surprising them. Riley stared at Damon and Xander in disbelief. The girls who were watching were admiring Damon's strength and grace. He moved like the wind. Avery also watched Damon in disbelief. She watched as Damon dodged left and right, and she suddenly realized that her grandpa might not have been lying about what had happened on the bus. She had been skeptical about his claims before, but now, when she saw Damon's skill, all her doubts disappeared. Suddenly, someone shouted, You guys, run! More people are coming! It was some girls from their classes who were warning them. Although they had the upper hand right now, who knew what would happen if Andy and Drew's reinforcements arrived? Damon couldn't believe that Andy and Drew still had more people willing to help them. Angry cries rang out. Then, Damon saw a group of men arriving. These men were holding baseball bats and wearing black clothes. They looked extremely fierce. They were pushing the people in the crowd out of their way. Then, they charged towards Damon and his friends. They attacked like a hurricane making landfall. Their leader was a man in his 30s. He had a scar on his face that stretched from the corner of his mouth all the way to his eye. It was Jeff. He looked very fierce. When Jeff reached Drew, he shouted, Stop! Damon was stunned. He waited to see what this man would do next. Drew, Andy, and the rest of their gang had been about to run away. When they saw Jeff, they were overjoyed. He was their savior. They all ran over to greet him. Jeff, you finally came. You must help us teach these losers a lesson. Help us beat them. Drew wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and said weakly, It's up to you now. If anything happens, I will take responsibility. The people on Damon's side had looks of fear in their eyes. When they were fighting Andy and Drew's gang, everyone was unarmed. After all, they were all just students. The situation had not been as serious. But now, they were facing armed men. Things had completely changed. The students were worried about fighting these gangsters. Drew and Andy were no longer concerned. Everyone looked at the men with baseball bats. This was a confusing development. These gangsters had no qualms about injuring students. Compared to these seasoned criminals, the students were at an absolute disadvantage. Only Damon remained confident. He completely ignored this group of arrogant hooligans. Jeff didn't even look at Damon and his friends. To Jeff, these students were chopped liver. Jeff patted himself on the chest and said, Mr. Parker, don't worry, leave these useless students to me. A thin man holding a metal bat backed Jeff up. Jeff is right. Don't worry, Mr. Parker. Just leave it to us. Beating up a bunch of useless students is not a problem for us. They are all spineless pieces of trash. We will beat them till they beg for mercy. The gang of hooligans all laughed at these words. Drew didn't want Jeff to underestimate Damon as he had, so he warned Jeff. They are quite good at fighting and they are a united force, so be careful. Students are all a bunch of useless losers. Even if they can fight, they don't stand a chance against our bats. Jeff waved the weapon in his hand and continued to shout loudly, I've dealt with a lot of unruly students before. Don't worry, I can handle them. Jeff's confident attitude made many of the students quake in their boots. Drew felt a bit awkward when he heard this. After all, he was also a student, but he did not say anything. However, Jeff's attitude had angered many of the surrounding students. When they heard Jeff's tone, they were extremely angry, but they did not dare to make a sound. Jeff turned to Damon and his friends and said, I'll give you a chance to get out of this. Kneel down and apologize. Jeff walked forward one step at a time. He was extremely arrogant. Xander stammered, You, you guys aren't so special. We, we aren't afraid of you. Jeff smiled coldly. Hey, loser, you won't be so confident after I'm done with you. Theo, Xander, Hector, and their friends were shrinking away in fear. 
but Damon boldly stepped forward and said to the gangsters, Get the hell out of here. You have 10 seconds, otherwise you will find out what Meyerson students are made of. Everyone was shocked. Damon looked very confident. He was the one who had forced Drew and Andy's gang to retreat before. He had proven he was a fierce fighter. He was still bent on teaching Drew and Andy a lesson. He wasn't intimidated by this evil man. You have a death wish. Get out of there. Countless female students screamed in fear. Damon was like their Prince Charming. They didn't want him to get hurt. Damon could fight, but his chances of winning did not look good. In the face of this group of fierce-looking hoodlums, Damon showed no fear. Jeff started to approach Damon. He knew that Damon was the student's leader. Jeff had probably bullied a lot of students before. He thought that all the students were timid and incompetent. Therefore, Jeff decided to teach Damon a lesson that he would never forget. Jeff pulled an iron pipe out of his sleeve. Then he roared intimidatingly, Get him! The group of thugs with baseball bats narrowed their eyes and flicked their cigarette butts onto the ground. Then they followed Jeff as he advanced towards Damon. Damon's voice boomed like thunder. Have courage, friends. Attack! Then, before the eyes of Avery, Jillian, Riley, and countless other students, Damon took the lead and rushed towards Jeff. Theo shouted, Charge! and ran after Damon. The gangsters attacked like a pack of wolves. Quinn, who was covered in blood, shouted, We will be the last one standing. Xander shouted loudly too. He picked up a stool and swung it at one of the gangsters. However, the gangster swung his baseball bat and hit Xander, knocking him down. Xander's head was bleeding. He was down on the ground. Damon roared, Hey guys, we are going to make you pay for that. He punched a hooligan in the head with his fist. The hooligan screamed and fell down. Blood flowed from his nose. When Damon's friends saw blood spurting from Xander's head, their hearts sank. Ralph, however, saw red and he shouted, How dare they hit one of us? Everyone attack! Thus, the group of students overcame their fear and rejoined the fray. Twenty or thirty students banded together and rushed forward to fight the group of hoodlums. Their anger was extremely explosive. Damon had taken a bat off of one of his opponents, and he waved it above his head as he charged down more gangsters. The university was full of energetic young guys, but they usually followed the rules and did not fight or cause trouble. But today, they were all letting loose. They were defending their friends from this group of hoodlums who had come to the school purposely looking for trouble. Furthermore, these students had guts. They weren't hiding from the gangsters. When they saw their friends getting hurt, they didn't hesitate to fight back. No one was going to let these gangsters get away with hurting their friends. Furthermore, what Jeff said just now was also an extreme insult to all university students. How could they sit back and let him say such a thing? In the beginning, some students had responded to Damon's call and joined the fight. However, some students had been too timid to fight the armed gangsters. But now, more and more students kept joining the fight. They were emboldened by their classmates' fearlessness. Now, Damon and his friends were not the only ones fighting. The onlookers also rushed in to help. Even people who had been watching from their balconies upstairs came down to help. The students were like a rising tide. They were drowning the group of gangsters. They wanted to fight for the dignity of all Meyerson University students. Damon used his bat to knock down a few of the gangsters. Jeff was fighting with Theo when he saw Damon attacking his thugs with a bat. He was furious. How dare you? I'm going to kill you! All the students heard Jeff's words. Why was he talking about killing people? Things were getting really out of hand. Was he being serious? The students had to stop him. Furthermore, when Jeff realized that Damon's side was winning, he became even more furious. The students sensed his fear, and they felt even more confident. Although the students were usually passive folks, they were caught up in the excitement of the fight. University life was usually dull and peaceful, but today, everyone had gone off the rails. University life was normally full of nothing but exams and studying, but today... Everyone was letting loose. One day, when these students were older, they would recall their time spent in university. They would remember this passionate moment. They would brag to their children and grandchildren about how they had fought off the gangsters on campus. It was a serious brawl. More and more students joined the battle. The situation was out of control. It was turning into a massacre. The gangsters didn't stand a chance. Many of the students had never seen such a massive brawl before. Some onlookers were very upset. Some cried, some screamed, and some called the police. However, when they saw that the students' side was winning, the onlookers cheered and jumped for joy. 
many gangsters were fleeing. At the same time, the onlookers heckled the gangsters. Hey, do you still think you're so tough? How dare you come to Meyerson University and cause trouble for us? Yeah, we'll show you. Everyone wanted to teach the gangsters a lesson. Damon knew that his job was done. He knew that he had successfully rallied the Meyerson University students. They could take care of the remaining gangsters on their own. It was not a normal day on campus. The peacefulness had been shattered. More and more students kept courageously joining the fight. It was inevitable that these hoodlums would lose the battle. The onlookers continued joining the fight, and more students kept streaming out of the dormitories to get a piece of the action. Avery, Jillian, and the other girls stood off to one side watching. They saw countless students swarming out of all the dorm buildings to join the fray. These students carried makeshift weapons, and they valiantly attacked the group of hoodlums. Most of the people who were fighting were guys. Girls stuck their heads out of the windows of their dorms to watch. When they saw the violence going on outside, they were so shocked that they couldn't speak. At this moment, all the students from Meyerson were heroes. This brawl would definitely go down in campus history. Students would discuss it enthusiastically for years to come. As for Jeff and his group of cronies, they were getting their butts kicked. There was nowhere for them to hide. The students had surrounded them from all directions. Undoubtedly, Jeff was the one who suffered the most. Avery was shocked by the intense battle that was going on, but she kept her eyes on Damon. She was worried that he would get hurt. Jillian, Riley, and the other girls were nervously praying that no one would get seriously hurt, but they were also happy to see the gangsters running away like rats. They suddenly felt proud to know the guys from Room 502. The guys were brave, and they had taken matters into their own hands. After today, the guys from Room 502 would probably become more famous. Alex, Frank, Emily, and the others were also shocked. Frank was so excited that he rubbed his hands together. He was eager to join the fight. However, Alex did not want Frank to get involved, so Frank had to watch from the sidelines. Emily said excitedly, That guy is really good at fighting. Alex nodded repeatedly and said, He really has guts. Damon did have guts. A lot of guts. How could he keep his cool in such a situation? At this moment, Damon was not satisfied with fighting only 10 gangsters. He wanted to fight a hundred. Andy and Drew were frightened. Their faces had turned pale. They had never thought that the fight would turn out like this. It was completely unexpected. They were panicked and scared. They were from wealthy families, so they were quite worldly, but in essence, they were still only students. They had been in small skirmishes to show off their might, but they had never been in a brawl like this before. This was a chaotic battle with over a hundred people. Drew and Andy were stupefied. What was happening now was their fault. They had been the ones who called the hooligans. If the police came, they would be punished. They definitely wouldn't be able to escape the consequences. Andy and Drew were so scared that they were trembling. They wanted to get into their cars and drive away. The girls who were with Andy and Drew were also scared. Their faces had turned pale. They no longer looked proud or confident. They were panicking and thinking about running away. The jocks who had been acting so tough and cool earlier did not have the heart to continue fighting. They had already scattered. They're the main corporates. Don't let them escape. Someone had noticed that Andy and Drew were preparing to run. With angry shouts, the mob of students picked up stones and bricks and began to smash the luxury cars. The students destroyed the luxury cars, which were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars each in moments. The students had never liked stuck-up people like Andy and Drew. But now Andy and Drew had gone too far. They had called a group of hooligans to come and beat up their classmates. This was intolerable. Poor Andy and Drew, they were usually quick-witted, but now they didn't know what to do. All they could do was to hide in their cars and call the police. They trembled and prayed that nothing would happen to them before the police arrived. Fortunately, the weapons in the hands of the students were quite crude. It was unlikely that they would be able to smash out the car windows before the police arrived. After the gangsters were completely immobilized, the students began to disperse. Finally, campus security sent people over. Not long after that, the officers from the nearby police station also arrived. They brought Damon, Theo, and the others to the station to make statements. The gangsters, who had been beaten, were sent to the hospital for treatment. Apparently, their injuries were quite serious. How could their injuries not be serious after a beating like that? When Damon and his friends arrived at the police station, a rather overweight officer sat down with them and asked, Who started the fight? I did, Damon said. He had fought the most fiercely. He didn't like fighting, but today it was unavoidable. Xander could not just sit back and let Damon take all the blame. He rolled up his sleeves and said, 
I was the one who started it. The fight had nothing to do with him. I don't even know this guy. Xander wanted to take responsibility for starting the fight. He even told the officer how his girlfriend had been bullied by the gangsters. I heard that you guys encouraged your fellow students to join the fight. Why didn't you think about the consequences? This is a university, not a nightclub. Theo said, We had no choice. Those hooligans were attacking our fellow students. They even mistreated a girl from our school, and no one dared to stand up to them. Hector quickly added, Yes, yes, officer, go and look. The weapons that they brought are probably still on the ground there. The officer was upset when he heard that the gangsters had come armed. He sent some other officers back to campus to collect the evidence. When they returned, he looked at the weapons and cursed to himself. What did these hooligans think they were doing? Did they think they could go on campus and bully students as they pleased? This was ridiculous. The officer sympathized with the students of Meyerson. However, the other police officers were very unhappy about the situation. A police officer who was in his early 20s said, Some people might think that you acted as heroes, but you hurt people today. You beat people up and hospitalized them. You injured these men. They have the right to pursue legal action against you. Damon was surprised to find that he already knew this policeman. It was the same officer who had been investigating his and Will's software development workshop. His name was Chandler, and he had caused problems for Damon before. Xander was unhappy about what Officer Chandler had said. Xander said, Officers, they attacked us first. Aren't we allowed to defend ourselves? Were we supposed to let them beat us? We live in a society with laws. We'll talk about it when the police chief arrives. Chandler's words left no room for argument. Hector said, We tried calling the police, but no one arrived in time. Chandler slammed his fist down on the table and shouted, Who said that? We got there as soon as we could. You didn't show up until the hooligans called you, someone muttered. Chandler's eyes widened in surprise and he asked, Who said that? Who's talking? Another young policeman said, Do you think everyone acts as entitled as you bunch of know-it-alls? Do you think you have the right to hurt people? I think you guys are the ones who started the trouble in the first place. I think that you are the hooligans. I think we should detain you guys. The young policeman's name was John Stryker. He had disliked this group of students since he met them. Officer Stryker had failed his SATs. Later on, he had taken remedial courses and managed to get into the police academy. In the end, he had succeeded at becoming a police officer. Officer Stryker didn't like students because he had such a hard time in school himself. He was prejudiced against Damon and his friends. Bullying this group of students brought Officer Stryker an inexplicable sense of pleasure. However, Officer Stryker was poking a hornet's nest. Some other students had been eavesdropping outside the interrogation room. When they heard Officer Stryker's words, they immediately became angry. Someone shouted, What? Don't you have a conscience? We tried to call the police, but no one showed up in time. After those gangsters called, you guys showed up pretty fast. We suspect that you are corrupt. The students who were waiting in the hall made all kinds of sarcastic remarks. Officer Stryker became extremely angry. If you guys have anything else to say, I'll arrest you. Luckily, the senior officer sitting beside Officer Stryker had a sense of justice. He also felt that Officer Stryker's words were a bit much, so he said, Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We won't make any decisions until we investigate the matter thoroughly. A bunch of hooligans had come to campus and beaten up students. Furthermore, they had even used weapons. It looked like a case of self-defense. The senior officer had many years of experience, and he knew he had to mediate between the parties involved. Clearly, the hooligans were in the wrong. If these men had really come to campus intending to beat up students, the president of Meyerson University would be furious. The delayed arrival of the police would look very bad. That said, the hooligans were the ones in the hospital. In short, the senior officers had to think carefully about who to release and who to arrest. Officer Stryker knew that he could not risk offending the public at this moment. He would have to take Jeff's statement later. Then he could arrest Damon. Sending Damon to jail would solve Officer Stryker's problem. The officers took Damon and his friend's statement and warned them not to be so impulsive in the future. Then, the officers waved their hands and let them go. The guys went back to campus. Campus security was still cleaning up the mess in front of the dorms. The brawl reflected badly on them. They hadn't arrived at the scene until much too late. They couldn't believe that armed gangsters had actually come to campus to attack students. This was simply outrageous. The security guards were secretly pleased that the students had defended themselves so competently. Some guards even thought that the students should have been more ruthless. They wanted the group of hoodlums to learn a lesson that they would never forget for the rest of their lives. That way, the gangsters would leave students alone from now on. 
When Damon and his friends left the police station, they saw countless students waiting for them outside. Avery, Veronica, and some other girls from the dorms were waiting too. Damon wasn't surprised to see Avery. After all, she had been at the fight. Damon was, however, rather surprised to see Veronica. The night had caused quite a commotion, so it was possible that Veronica had heard about it. A lot of people had participated. Additionally, Veronica was in the student union, so she probably got wind of it through them. Now that Damon thought about it, it made sense to him that she had come to take a look. When Theo's girlfriend, Willow, saw Damon and the guys come out of the police station, she could not help but tease. Our heroes have arrived, everyone welcome them. Everyone around burst into laughter and applause. Damon did indeed look like a hero right now. He had been the one who led the charge. If not for him, the students wouldn't have had the courage to fight back against the gangsters. Avery blinked her eyes and smiled. She asked, Damon, did you get in trouble? They didn't punish you, did they? Damon shook his head. Some of the police officers had been quite friendly, but others had tried to cause trouble for him. Compared to Avery, who had only smiled, Veronica seemed more concerned. She asked, You guys are not hurt, are you? Do you want to go to the hospital to get checked out? I heard that the fight was quite intense. I hope everyone is safe. The students around Veronica made fun of her for being so concerned. They jeered, Veronica, why don't you take our hero to the doctor for a checkup? Veronica's pretty face turned slightly red, but she quickly regained her composure. She realized she was being a worrywart. Damon shook his head and said, I'm fine. Veronica did not say anything else. Instead, she went to comfort the other students who had been in the fight. She wanted to let people know that the student union had their backs as well as Damon's. She did not want people to think she was giving Damon special treatment. Many of these guys had never received attention from Veronica before. They were very grateful. Because it was late, the students began to head back to the dorms. Along the way, they chatted about how they had risked their lives to fight the hoodlums. After all the excitement, Avery did not want to bother Damon with questions about music, so she went back to campus alone. Avery walked into the dormitory and saw that it was very lively inside. The girls were having a heated discussion about the fight. The girls in the dorm were good, law-abiding students, and they had not dared to go and check it out. Even if the fight had been for a good reason, they still found it scandalous. What's more, it had even been the biggest fight in campus history. Although the girls were scandalized, they also admired the guys for standing up for what was right. The guys sounded very courageous. Avery was surprised that the fight had gotten out of control so quickly. People had shown up from across the entire city. The brawl was all over social media. The students were being hailed as heroes, and among them, the most eye-catching person of all was undoubtedly Damon. He had rallied the students against the gangsters. Although people's memories of the fight were hazy, they could still clearly remember Damon waving his arms and shouting as he led them into battle. Girls found his courage and his sense of justice dreamy. The fight between the students and the hooligans would go down in Meyerson University history. It would become a part of campus lore. In their dormitory, Brianna, Carly, and another girl named Bailey were all watching the videos of the fight that had been posted on social media. From time to time, one of them would exclaim, Wow, he is so handsome. Huh? Why do I feel this guy in the video looks like Avery's high school classmate? asked Brianna. She had sharp eyes. Although the video was grainy, she was still able to recognize Damon's features. Carly also felt the guy in the video looked familiar. She could not help turning her head and saying, Avery, watch this. Is this Damon? Avery shook her head and said softly, I don't know. She did not look at the video. She already knew it was Damon. At this moment, she was sitting in front of the window and staring at her reflection in a daze. She was deep in thought. Since the beginning of the semester, Avery had come down off her high horse and started hanging out with her old classmates again. She spent time with Veronica now, too. She had her ways of getting information about Damon without him noticing. She did not know when it had started, but lately she was paying more attention to Damon than she did to any other guy. If she really thought about it, she could trace this habit back to the moment when he had discovered that Damon was Ryan Gold. Avery had a lot of guys interested in her, but she had started comparing them all to Damon. Doing this caused Avery to lose interest in these guys, but every time she met Damon, she acted indifferent towards him. Avery was torn. She did not know why she felt so conflicted. She thought for a long time. Then she realized that it was late, so she went to bed. But Avery had Damon on her mind all night and could not sleep. Carly and Brianna heard Avery tossing and turning, so Brianna teased. 
Avery, are you thinking about Dario and how he was planning to ask you out tomorrow? Are you so excited that you can't sleep? Avery shook her head. Carly and Brianna did not know that Avery was dreading Dario's proposal. The whole situation was weighing on her. The next day was Sunday. It was a sunny day. It was the morning after the fight, and a group of people had come to find Damon. It was Alex, Emily, and Frank. They didn't have classes that morning, so they had come straight to Damon's dormitory to find him. Emily called Damon and asked him to come downstairs. Emily got his phone number when she met him at the tech conference. As for knowing where Damon lived, Damon was already a well-known person on campus. It had been easy to find out where he lived. When Damon saw Emily, Alex, and Frank, he was a little surprised. He hadn't known they were coming. Although the three of them had come to watch the fight, Damon hadn't noticed them in the crowd. He had been too caught up in the chaos. When Emily saw the look of surprise on Damon's face, she crossed her arms over her chest and smiled sweetly. She asked, What are you so surprised about? I told you that we were all living in Meyerson too. Oh, that's right. For a moment I forgot, Damon exclaimed. Emily playfully winked at him and said, I study Spanish at a college nearby. Spanish was the third most spoken language in the world. It was a very useful skill. Damon had tried to learn Spanish before, but he had just studied on his own. He hadn't had a teacher. Furthermore, Damon did not have much free time to spend studying Spanish, so he had not made much progress. He had not expected Emily to be learning Spanish. Alex reached out to shake Damon's hand. Hello again. Alex had a cool demeanor. Damon remembered noticing this the first time they had met too. Frank quickly stretched out his hand too and said with a smile, Yes, good to see you again. I'm also attending a nearby university. You ran away before I could properly introduce myself last time. <sighs> if Emily hadn't run into you again, we never would have been able to find you. What are the odds that we'd all be studying in Meyerson? Although they had only met each other briefly before, the three of them greeted Damon as if he were an old friend. This went to show how skilled Emily and her friends were at dealing with people. Their warm demeanors instantly put Damon at ease. Their presence was refreshing like a spring breeze. Although they did not mention how Damon had helped them the first time they met, it was clear that they respected him. They admired him even more after witnessing his ruthlessness in the fight yesterday evening. Frank nodded his head and said, That's right, that's right. Damon, it is surprising for us to meet again like this. It's almost noon now, let's go out and have lunch together. Out of the three of them, Frank was the one who was most familiar with Damon. He really admired him. After inviting Damon for lunch, Frank put his arm around Damon's shoulder. Alex, who was standing on Damon's other side, patted him on the back. Damon couldn't get out of having lunch with them, even if he wanted to. It was obvious that Emily, Frank, and Alex were trying to befriend Damon. The four of them went to the campus pub. They got a table, and Frank went up to the bar to order them all lunch. He said casually to the server, Hey, we will have four burger specials. Obviously, Frank had been here before because when the server saw him, he immediately greeted Frank warmly. The server asked if they wanted drinks on the house. Frank came back to the table to ask what they wanted to drink. Frank asked Damon first out of courtesy. Damon said he didn't care what he drank, so Alex said, Let's just get a pitcher of beer. No! Before Alex could finish speaking, Emily interrupted and said straightforwardly, Alex, it's rare that we get to hang out with Damon. It's a special occasion. Let's drink whiskey. Alex and Frank smiled bitterly. Although Alex was the leader of this group, Emily had strong opinions. It was easier to just go along with what she wanted. Damon was surprised by Emily's forthright attitude. He had not expected Emily to want to drink whiskey at lunchtime. She was pretty hardcore. While they were waiting for their meals, Frank took out his phone and made a call. Alex and Emily were close friends, and they started chatting with Damon about what they had been up to since the last time they met. Apart from talking about video games, they also talked about interesting things that happened at school. The fight was a main topic of discussion too. They were all surprised by how the police and school authorities had handled it. As they chatted, they got to know each other. Damon realized that Emily and Alex were very talkative, especially Alex. Alex was a charismatic and likable guy. After a while, Frank finished his call and joined their conversation. He put his feet up on an empty chair. Emily wasn't happy about this. She said, quit being so rude. Frank awkwardly took his feet off the chair. Then he said excitedly, Damon, why don't you teach me how to fight? I really admire your skills. This wasn't the first time Frank had seen Damon beat up hooligans. Damon's fighting prowess awed Frank every time he witnessed it. Damon had still been honing his skills back when he fought Wilder. However, Damon had fought like a pro during the chaotic battle that had ensued last night. He had fought a gang of more than a hundred people. Damon was simply awesome. 
Damon was happy to teach Frank what he could. He said, Sure, if you want to learn, I can teach you, but it will be hard work. Frank became excited. I'm not afraid of hard work. He had been interested in fighting since he was young. He especially liked MMA. He was excited about the prospect of learning fighting skills from Damon. The four of them were having a good chat when another bunch of people arrived. Damon had a good memory. He quickly noticed two familiar faces among the group. One of them was a girl who had been with Alex when Damon had first met him back in New York City. Her name was Chloe. The familiar face belonged to a tall and strong looking guy. Damon didn't know his name, but he recognized him from the fight last night. He had been on Drew and Andy's side. Damon had paid special attention to him during the fight because he had fought so fiercely. Now his face was swollen and he had gauze wrapped around the top of his head. He looked rather pathetic. There were a few other men and women. Everyone in the group was dressed fashionably. Damon did not recognize anyone else. Naturally, the guy with the injuries recognized Damon too. He was very surprised to see Alex and Damon sitting together. Chloe was also very surprised, but she acted more arrogantly. She talked and laughed with people in her friend circle, like Alex and Frank, but to Damon, she acted cool and aloof. After all, in Chloe's eyes, the two of them belonged to different worlds. Alex nodded to the newcomers. He pointed at the empty chair and said to the tall guy with the swollen face, Nathaniel, you sit here. Alex was pointing at the spot opposite to Damon. Nathaniel was a little unwilling to take the seat. After all, Damon had beaten him up just last night. Even now, he was still in a lot of pain. However, Alex was the absolute authority in their circle. Nathaniel hummed and hawed, but eventually he sat down. Although he was sitting across from Damon, Nathaniel's gaze drifted around the pub. He wouldn't even look at Damon. Frank, who was sitting next to him, was unhappy. Nathaniel, don't be so petty, okay? Damon's our friend. Don't embarrass us. Nathaniel did not want to embarrass Alex or Frank, so naturally he didn't say anything, but he was shocked to hear Alex calling Damon a friend. Nathaniel looked around hopelessly. Frank laughed loudly and said, Let's get to know each other without fighting. Nathaniel, today Alex called you here because he wants to introduce you to Damon. Don't cause trouble for him anymore, okay? Now you know each other, Alex said. Shake hands. Nathaniel helplessly stretched out his hand. Damon smiled and shook hands with Nathaniel. After that, everyone became lively. The other people in the group were mostly all part of the same circle of friends. They all knew Alex. Two of them had been in a fight last night. Drew and Andy had called them to come help. Now that Alex had introduced them to Damon, they knew each other and any grudges that they had had vanished into thin air. At least, that's how it seemed with Alex and Frank there to maintain order. Nathaniel turned to Damon and said, Since you and Alex know each other, I guess we can be friends. You have to be careful of Drew. He suffered a huge loss last night, and so did Jeff. They are coming up with a plan to deal with you. Damon smiled. Thank you for letting me know. I will be careful. Nathaniel saw that Damon hadn't taken what he said seriously. He smirked and did not say anything else. Alex said, Nathaniel, you are also a student at Meyerson University. You and Damon should watch each other's backs in the future. If Drew makes any moves, tell Damon. Damon was grateful to Alex. Nathaniel nodded. As for whether he was really willing to help Damon, no one could say. Everyone enjoyed their meals. After lunch, Frank suggested going to another bar to continue the party. However, Damon did not like the vibe he was getting from the newcomers. Alex, Frank, and Emily already regarded Damon as one of their own, but they were from two different worlds. Damon knew he was not like them, so he made an excuse to leave and told them that he had classes in the afternoon. Alex and Emily knew very well that Damon felt uncomfortable. They knew that he was not used to hanging out with their crowd, so they did not try to force him to stay. Frank, on the other hand, felt sorry to see Damon leave, so he said, Damon, my teacher, I will call you that from now on. If you have time, let me know. I will come to campus to meet you. You must remember to teach me how to fight. Damon nodded, said goodbye to everyone, and went back to the dorms. However, along the way, Damon remembered that Emily studied Spanish. If Damon wanted to promote his next game, Old Century, in different countries around the world, he would need someone to translate it into Spanish. Why not consult Emily on this matter? She could teach him what he needed to know. He did not know if Emily would be interested in teaching him or not, but it was worth asking her. Autumn had arrived. Red and gold maple leaves covered the ground. Avery went to class that morning in a happy mood. She was full of energy. She had made a seemingly important decision for herself, and now she felt exceptionally relaxed. After classes ended, Avery returned to her dormitory and dialed Damon's number. When he picked up, she asked, Damon, did the police come looking for you to ask more questions? 
Damon said, No, they didn't follow up. I think I'm in the clear. Besides, the school is trying to sweep this matter under the rug. Although the fight yesterday had been intense, the students had not instigated the fight. They had just been defending themselves. Lots of witnesses attested to this. The school was angry that this group of hoodlums had dared to come on campus and cause trouble. They thought that these gangsters had gotten what they deserved, so how could they punish the students? However, the students were definitely not being rewarded for their actions either. After all, they had been a bad influence. The university couldn't encourage such behavior. In the end, the school decided to give the students a pass on their bad behavior and try to suppress the news about what had happened. As for Jeff's gang of hoodlums, Damon had taken care of the worst of them. More than half of the gangsters were still in the hospital, unable to get out of bed. The police were still investigating them. There was no need to mention how useless these bedridden gangsters were. However, the main culprits, Andy and Drew, had not been punished. The students were angry about this. After all, Andy and Drew had started the fight. What was even more ridiculous was that they had called the gangsters to the school. In the end, they had gotten away with it. How could the students not be angry? However, Andy and Drew were from influential families. This result was to be expected. There was nothing that the students could do. After hearing that Damon was fine, Avery felt more relaxed. She smiled brightly and asked, Then do you have time in the afternoon? I still want you to look over that song I wrote. I need your help. Okay, I have time in the afternoon. Come find me. After they agreed on a time, Avery hung up the phone. Her heart was beating faster than usual. She kept wondering whether she had made the right decision. Should she confess her feelings to Damon? When she had made this decision last night, Avery could not help but laugh at herself. She had always been a proud person. She did not know when Damon had changed, but he had become a different person since their childhood together in New York City. Back then, Damon and Avery had occasionally hung out together. However, they had not been childhood sweethearts. Their relationship had not been romantic back then. Most of the time she had known Damon, he had just hid in the corner and watched her with admiring eyes. Back then, they had lived in two different worlds. But then Damon had changed. He had grown up. Somewhere along the way, he had become Avery's dream guy. Avery needed to redeem herself from her past mistakes. Actually, it was ironic now that she thought about it. Avery had once rejected Damon, but now she was afraid that he would reject her. Avery wanted to make up for how she had treated Damon in the past. However, she realized that if she did not act now, she might miss her chance. Avery did not want to have any regrets. If she missed her chance, she might never forgive herself. After all, Damon was an amazing guy. Avery walked over to Damon's dorm. She felt light on her feet. When she arrived, Damon had been waiting for her for a long time. When Avery saw Damon's warm smile, her worry eased. She waved the papers that she was holding in her hand and said, Do you want to go sit by the lake? They went to the lake to find some peace and quiet. No one would disturb them there. Avery took out a song that she had already written and handed it to Damon. The two of them sat quietly by the lake. Damon looked over Avery's song. She had not expected Damon to come so well prepared, so Avery was surprised when Damon took out a pen and started to make notes on Avery's song. Avery watched attentively. She realized that Damon's songwriting abilities were indeed outstanding. Originally, she had felt that the song she wrote was quite good, but after Damon started making changes, she suddenly realized that her original version had been quite amateur. After Damon's revisions, her song had risen to a whole new level. No wonder even Levi praised Damon. Avery also admired him. Avery was especially attracted to Damon's serious attitude. She found it irresistible. When they had first arrived at the lake, Avery paid attention as Damon revised her lyrics, but now Avery was no longer paying attention to the song. Anyway... Damon was helping her fix it, and he didn't require her input at the moment. Thus, her attention quietly shifted from the song to Damon. Damon's face looked gentle with the autumn sun shining on it, but he had a resolute expression that made Avery's heart beat faster. When had he grown so tall? Avery had always been the object of Damon's admiration. Was it appropriate for her to confess her feelings to him today? She wasn't sure. Would such a confession ruin Damon's image of her? Avery wondered these things to herself as she watched Damon. The sunlight shone on them and warmed their bodies. Damon glanced up at Avery and smiled. Avery remembered how courageous he had been during the fight. She remembered how he had rallied countless students to the cause. Damon was Avery's Prince Charming. He was her dream guy. However, it wasn't a dream. 
He was sitting next to her in the flesh and blood, and she was completely entranced. Avery's heart thumped as she wondered if she was being impulsive. She was getting nervous, and her face had turned red. She suddenly wondered if she would just end up embarrassing herself. Maybe she would regret her choice to confess her feelings. But if she didn't confess, Damon would never know how she felt. Avery would have to sit back and watch another girl take the guy of her dreams. Avery was not sure how she would feel if she missed her chance to tell Damon how she felt. But what if he rejected her advance? Even if he didn't have romantic feelings for her, they could at least continue to be friends, right? After all, the two of them had known each other since childhood, and they were friends with some of the same people. They would always have occasions to hang out together, and when they did, they would slowly get to know each other better. Time could heal their friendship. Then again, maybe it would be better just to let their relationship develop on its own. They were friends now. From friends, they might become good friends. Then, perhaps they would fall in love with each other and eventually get married. Avery was thinking hard about what to do, but Damon had a bright smile on his face. He did not know that at this moment, Avery was struggling internally to make a big decision. Damon put his hand into his pocket. He was totally oblivious. How could Avery muster up the courage to confess her feelings to him when he was acting so casually? Avery felt resentful. She was having a serious dilemma. Damon noticed that Avery's mind was not on the song, and he turned his head to look at her. Avery's expression looked conflicted. When Damon saw this, he felt very confused. Of course, he did not know what Avery was thinking at this moment. Damon felt only that Avery was acting very strangely. She had a weird look in her eye. It seemed like something was wrong. Suddenly, a guy and a girl walked past them. The girl was leaning against the guy. She curiously sized the two of them up. Then she shouted in surprise. Avery, what are you doing here? The girl turned out to be Avery's classmate. Her name was Beverly. She was dating a boy from Myerson University. The tense atmosphere disappeared as Avery greeted Beverly. Beverly's gaze landed on Damon. She did not know who Damon was, but she assumed that Avery and Damon had been doing something intimate, so she didn't stay to chat. Just as Beverly was about to leave, she suddenly thought of something. She said, That's right, Avery, why are you still here? Do you remember that Spanish guy, Dario? He has something planned for you tonight. You should go and get ready. After saying this, Beverly and her boyfriend left, chatting happily as they went. Who's the Spanish guy? Damon asked. Avery smiled sweetly and said, He is in some of my classes. He's a handsome guy. I heard he is from a prominent family. Besides being handsome, he's also very popular. He has quite a reputation. Wow, he sounds like a great guy. Even Damon was impressed. He smiled and said, Then you should go get ready. Don't let this handsome guy from Spain down. Avery's heart skipped a beat. She looked at Damon and smiled, but her smile was not genuine. She asked, Why? Aren't you jealous? When Damon heard her say this, he recalled the time when he had confessed his feelings to Avery at the party. When he thought about this now, it seemed like a very distant memory. He didn't feel the same way anymore. Not to mention that Damon was still with Fiona at the moment. Since Avery had asked this question so matter-of-factly, it seemed like she had made up her mind. She had decided to let nature take its course. She wouldn't force this matter. Avery had already made her decision to let Damon go, so why did she still feel so conflicted? Damon smiled and said, No, I'm not jealous. Don't forget that I already have a beautiful girl from the College of Music. She wants to be with me. But I've said too much. Maybe you don't want to hear it. That's right, Damon already had a girlfriend. Avery looked at Damon. She had a bright and beautiful expression on her face, and she said, Oh, yes, I already knew that. Of course I want to know how things are going with your girlfriend. Things are good with me and Fiona. We get along great. But it's not a big deal, Damon replied. That's good. I'm happy for you. Great. Well, I understand all the modifications that you've made to my song. Thank you, Damon. I really appreciate your help. If there's nothing else, I need to get going. Let's chat again soon when we have time, Avery said. Damon nodded. Go get ready. Wear something nice. I heard that this guy has something big planned for you tonight. If I wanted your advice, I would have asked for it, Avery said playfully. She rolled her eyes at Damon and flitted away like a butterfly. In the end, Avery had not confessed how she felt. She had hidden her true feelings. Damon watched Avery as she left. He thought about how this girl, who was as graceful as the wind, would probably have a boyfriend by tomorrow. Why hadn't she told Damon how she felt? Even Avery herself didn't know why. However, Avery walked away with her head held high. She had had a change of heart. Why should she confess to him? It would be best if she let this proud fellow find his own way back to her. Maybe then she would agree to be with him. Until that happened, 
Avery would make sure that Damon knew how excellent she was. If he was smart, he would try again. Avery thought that it was important for a person to get back on the horse. Nothing in life came easy. Pursuing girls required perseverance. Damon had to prove that he really wanted her. Damon returned to his dorm and was bored all afternoon. Later, as he expected, he heard that a popular student from the Meyerson College of Music had staged a big romantic gesture to ask a girl out. The student had lit 999 candles in front of the girl's dormitory. The candles were placed to form heart shapes. The student even dragged a bunch of people along to help him. All these people played important roles at the school. Some of them were student union members, and others were club leaders and organizers. Countless luxury cars were parked in the parking lot. This popular student from Spain had a lot of wealthy and influential friends. As for how Avery had responded, Damon did not know. All he knew was that this occurrence had caused quite a stir on campus. Dario's romantic proposal had indirectly caused many couples to quarrel. After hearing about the big romantic display, many girls wanted to break up with their boyfriends. They were unhappy because their boyfriends had never done anything like that for them. Fiona also knew about what Dario had done. After all, it had been a huge sensation. The next morning, Damon rode his bicycle over to meet Fiona, and they went for a walk by the lake. Autumn leaves covered the ground. Fiona hugged Damon tightly and asked him if he would ever organize a grand, romantic gesture for her like Dario had done for Avery. Damon replied that he was not that romantic. Fiona was so angry that she hit Damon with her fists, but before long, her punches became a hug and then the hug became a sweet, wet kiss. The air was cool, but they were warmed now. Fiona's body warmed Damon's as he held her in his arms. Fiona greedily breathed in Damon's scent. They stood that way for a long time. Eventually, they realized that it was almost noon, and they decided to head back to the dorms. On the way, Fiona asked Damon, Cupcake, if we ever had problems with our relationship, would you work on them with me? Would you have the courage to stay with me and try to solve our problems together? Damon tried to express that he would do what he could to make their relationship work, but he could tell that Fiona wasn't satisfied with his answer. He could sense her dissatisfaction. Speaking of working on relationships, Riley and Xander were back together again. Because of the brawl, it was impossible for Riley and Andy to be together, so Riley came back to find Xander. Although Xander wasn't from a rich family like Andy was, his other qualities were not so bad. Riley had been touched that Xander stood up for her, Xander had even dared to confront Andy face to face for her. Xander had taken Riley back. After all, he loved Riley a lot, so he chose to forgive her. He was willing to put all Riley's mistakes behind him. People always made compromises for the ones they loved. Life was filled with all kinds of unexpected strong emotions. After a long cold spell, the relationship between the guys in dorm 502 and the girls in dorm 201 became friendly again. Often they would all get together to take a walk by the lake. After their walk, they would sometimes go into the city together. Damon sometimes wondered what kind of problems Fiona might have been alluding to, but the answer to this would soon be revealed. Damon had not been to the radio station for a while. He did not have enough time. In addition to finishing work on the large-scale game, he also had to write the second half of the storyline for its sequel. Damon had recently published the first half of Old Century on the internet. This story was different from the New Century. Damon had chosen to translate this book into several different languages and market it to foreign countries as well. The foreign language versions of his book were selling very well. It was causing a huge stir in the literary world. The first half of the old century was even more popular than the new century had been. Damon was surprised that his second novel was doing so well. Lately, even more international publishing houses have reached out to him. They wanted to cooperate with him and have the book translated into even more languages. Damon needed help with this because he knew only English. Emily could speak Spanish, but there were a lot of other languages to consider. He wanted his book to be translated into French, Arabic, and so on. If the book got translated into multiple foreign languages, it could reach a wider audience. This way, it would indirectly pave the way for the game of the same name that Damon planned to launch in the future. While this was happening, Damon had already finished the general framework of the game. He had been working hard. The game contained an entire universe. It was an entire medieval world complete with mountains, rivers, animals, and characters. Damon had done all the work on it himself. However, for the time being, Damon was keeping it a secret from Will. He had yet to tell Will about his second book, Old Century, or about the spin-off game he was designing on the computer. After all, Will was busy with the company's day-to-day. -day. 
he had rented a huge space for KC Games. Because of this, finances were a little tight at the moment. Even though the Airblaze expansion and Tomb Run were doing well, developing a large-scale game was expensive. It was very different from making apps. The development cycle was long, and the capital needed was large. If this game went down the drain, it would deal a huge blow to KC Games. Therefore, Damon thought it would be better to put the matter of the old century aside for the time being. He didn't want to cause Will any undue stress. After class in the afternoon, Damon packed his books and went to the radio station. He was trying to think of a way to tell Veronica that he didn't want to work at the station anymore. He would host a few more shows with her and then call it quits. As he walked out of the building where his class had been, he noticed a black sedan parked on the other side of the road. Although the car didn't look like much, Damon knew it was a top-of-the-line model worth more than $400,000. It was a low-profile luxury car, and anyone who could afford to buy it must be rich. Damon could not help but take a second look, and he realized that there was a woman sitting in the passenger seat. She was wearing sunglasses, and she looked as if she was deep in thought. At this moment, the driver's door suddenly opened. A man got out, walked over to Damon, and said, Sir, are you free? Someone wants to discuss something with you. Damon was stunned. He saw the woman who was sitting in the passenger seat watching him. Damon frowned slightly, but he was fearless. He nodded. He wanted to find out what the woman in the car was up to. After Damon got into the car, the woman took off her sunglasses and turned around to look at Damon. She nodded at him. Then, she waved her hand and asked the driver to drive. She had no intention of saying anything to Damon right now. Damon felt this woman looked a little familiar. However, after searching his mind, he could not remember where he had seen her before. However, this woman had an intimidating demeanor. It was obvious that she was someone important. She just quietly looked out the window. If an ordinary student had been in this situation, he or she would probably feel uncomfortable. However, Damon was no ordinary student. He remained calm and composed. The woman did not speak, and he did not speak either. He wanted to see what this woman was up to. What was the worst she could do? Eat him? The car drove smoothly all the way through town and soon arrived at the Royal Hotel. The car door opened and the woman got out. She went straight up to a revolving restaurant on the 86th floor. The restaurant was decorated as extravagantly as a palace. When the two of them walked in, a group of smart-looking servers respectfully nodded their heads and greeted her. The woman hardly acknowledged their presence. It was clear that she was used to this kind of service. One of the servers recognized her and brought her to the best table in the whole restaurant. It had been reserved for her. Damon followed behind her. When he arrived at the table, he saw that it had an amazing view of the city. After the woman sat down, she said lightly, There's no need to stand, you can also sit. Damon sat down. The server poured them each a glass of very fine wine. The woman waved her hand again, and the server handed her a menu. The woman passed the menu to Damon. She said lightly, Order whatever you want to eat. After the woman had passed the menu to Damon, she carefully observed his reaction. Damon calmly took the menu, but when he saw the prices for the food, he felt that it was a waste of money. For example, the restaurant charged several hundred dollars for an entree. Even the appetizers were more than $50 each. The cheapest thing on the menu cost $30. This restaurant was indeed a place for people with money. Ordinary people could not afford to come here. When the woman saw Damon's surprised expression, she seemed very satisfied. She said, just order whatever you want, don't worry about the price. Damon was in a daze. He ordered a couple of appetizers. Then he put down the menu and waited for the woman to tell him why they were here. The woman drank her wine and watched Damon through narrowed eyes for a while. She looked as if she was savoring the flavor of the wine. Finally, she said softly, Hello, let me introduce myself first. I am Fiona's mother. I have been watching you for a while. You are dating Fiona, am I right? Damon knew why this woman looked so familiar. She looked a lot like Fiona. When he heard that this woman was Fiona's mother, Damon sat up straighter. He respectfully said, Hello, ma'am. Nice to meet you. Fiona's mother's name was Karen. She nodded and softly said, Not only have I been investigating you, but I've also been investigating your family in New York City. I know about your parents and your sister. Karen came off as somewhat overbearing. Damon could tell from her demeanor that she was an extremely powerful woman. But when Damon heard these words, he felt a little uncomfortable. He did not like the idea of someone investigating his family. At the same time, he felt that Karen had not come to him with good intentions. Damon even guessed that Karen's arrival might lead to a lot of drama. So Damon tried to keep his expression neutral. He asked, Ma'am, why are you investigating my family? 
Please allow me to explain myself first. I have no ill intentions for my investigation. I am doing it only for my daughter's sake. Karen spoke in a dignified manner. Damon was surprised that she had brushed his concerns aside so easily, but he did not speak. Karen continued. Karen was somewhat surprised that Damon was still so calm. He had not taken offense to her strong tone. She was even a little impressed. This young man was acting very professionally. Not many people his age would react like this. However, it would take more than just this to impress Karen. Karen was clearly concerned about Damon's financial means. She wanted to ensure that Damon could take care of her daughter. But Karen was concerned about other things as well. Any guy who wanted to date her daughter needed to have good character. He needed to be capable and driven. Although Damon seemed like a nice young man, he didn't meet her requirements. Karen's investigation had turned up some things that she did not approve of. However, Karen did not say anything to hurt Damon. She took a mirror out of her bag and powdered her nose. She did not talk about Fiona. Instead, she started to tell Damon about her past. Speaking of which, I know that you and Fifi are both students. I remember when I met Fiona's father. I had just graduated from Meyerson University when I fell in love with him. We had a very intense relationship. Damon did not say anything. He let Karen continue. Back then, when I married Fifi's father, my parents strongly opposed it. Fiona's father didn't have any money, but I insisted on marrying him. I thought he was talented. I thought that as long as we were together, we could do anything. So he and I eloped without my parents' blessing. Even today, my parents don't agree with my choice to be with Fifi's father. He was a very hardworking guy, and he had plans for the future. Furthermore, he was considered a successful businessman by a lot of people. Despite all this, we still got divorced. Damon's heart skipped a beat. Now he knew why Fiona's father had been alone when he met him. This explains why Fiona's mother had not been there. The two of them were divorced. Damon could not help but smile bitterly to himself. He thought that since he had passed Fiona's father's inspection, he was in the clear. He had not expected Fiona's mother to be the biggest obstacle. Karen finished speaking and paused for a moment. She looked at Damon intensely and continued. Do you know why our relationship didn't work? Why? Damon asked. Fiona's father was a successful businessman. This proved that Fiona's father was indeed a capable person. Why had they divorced? Our relationship didn't work because I was disappointed in him, Karen said. My parents had objected to him since we first met, but the main reason things didn't work out was that I was disappointed in him. At the end of the day, he wasn't successful enough for me. After he achieved a certain level of success, he lost his motivation to strive for more. I finally believed what my parents had said. You are who you were born to be. No matter how talented he was, his horizons were too small. In the end, he didn't want to pursue greatness. Damon was smart, and he understood the meaning behind Karen's words. Karen came from a wealthy family, and Fiona's father came from a poor family. Although Fiona's father felt that his life had been very successful, it wasn't enough for Karen. Although Fiona's father had been talented, he lacked drive. It was a sad thought. Because he lost his motivation, he also lost everything else. Karen's story went to show how proud and arrogant she was. Karen paused for a moment and noticed that Damon was frowning. He looked deep in thought. She continued, Also, how well do you know Fifi? Do you know her hobbies? She likes to travel. Every summer vacation, I give her a considerable amount of money so she can travel to several continents around the world. I want her to experience the world. Additionally, when she travels, she travels in style. She stays in five-star hotels, and she rents luxury yachts. She goes to places like Dubai, London, and Paris. She always eats at the best restaurants. Karen took a moment to point at the menu. Then she said, Maybe this seems like an extremely expensive place to you, but Fifi does not eat in ordinary restaurants. Damon's frown got even bigger. Although he had always guessed that Fiona's family was wealthy, he had not expected them to be this wealthy. Karen smiled when she saw Damon frown. She said, I will not discourage you. Moreover, the fact that you got into Meyerson University proves that you are very talented. But do you think you can afford to support Phoebe's lifestyle? Just when Karen thought she had Damon convinced, she saw his expression change. He was firm and calm as he said, Yes. Karen's eyes immediately widened. She thought that Damon was joking. Young man, do you think I am kidding around? To be honest, I don't want you to date Fifi. You two come from different worlds. Moreover, if you continue to date Fifi, I will cut her off. I won't pay for her lifestyle anymore. This was a serious threat.
Damon remained unmoved. He said indifferently, Ma'am, if this is all you've brought me here for, I'm afraid you will be disappointed. If you have nothing else to say, can I leave now? For the first time, Karen felt that this young man in front of her was a little troublesome to deal with. She said faintly, Also, Fiona already has a fiancé. You two can't be together. Damon was shocked, but he maintained a cool demeanor. Damon called a taxi and went back to the dormitory. When he got back, he received a call from Fiona. Damon picked up the phone and Fiona asked sweetly, Cupcake, where are you? I'm in the dormitory. Do you want to come and study with me? Fiona lowered her voice so that her roommates couldn't hear her and said, I miss you. Okay, Damon agreed. He didn't have anything better to do. He said goodbye and hung up the phone. In the girls' dormitory, Gwen saw that Fiona was packing her textbooks and preparing to go to the library. Gwen, who was putting on makeup, glanced at Fiona and pursed her lips, but she didn't say anything. Now that she knew Fiona was determined to be with Damon, she had nothing to say about it. Gwen knew that saying anything would be futile. Furthermore, Gwen was only a bystander. She could not control Fiona, but she didn't understand what Fiona saw in Damon. She could not stand the guy. Why did he insist on pursuing a girl like Fiona? But Gwen got over it for the moment and became happy again. Gwen had always thought highly of herself, but she felt inferior next to Fiona. Gwen was a proud person and it was no secret that she tried to compete with Fiona. However, Fiona came out on top of Gwen in most situations. But this time, Gwen had bested Fiona in the boyfriend category. Gwen's boyfriend came from a wealthy family, whereas Fiona's boyfriend didn't have any money and wore knockoff brands. Gwen was proud of the guy she was dating. This made Gwen feel a lot more confident about her standing. Fiona went out and Gwen was planning to go out too. She was going to a masquerade ball at a nearby club. Usually this kind of ball was very exclusive. Gwen thought she looked great tonight. She wanted to be surrounded by beautiful people. A lot of rich guys would be going to this event. Although she had a boyfriend, she could still make friends with other guys, right? Gwen was drawn to the elite crowd. She wanted to be one of them. At this moment, someone flung open the dormitory door. Maddie ran in. She was clearly in a hurry. When she saw Gwen, her eyes lit up and she asked, Gwen, where are you going? I'm going to a ball. Oh, Maddie exclaimed. Then she said, do you have any plans next weekend? I heard that there is going to be a car show at the exhibition center. There will be a lot of expensive cars on display. Gwen nodded. Of course I know. I've already asked someone to get tickets for me. I heard that the tickets to this exhibition are hard to get. My friend in the Association of Young Entrepreneurs was able to get one for me. Is that so? Maddie exclaimed. She suddenly felt a little nervous. Then she mustered her courage and tactfully asked. Then, Gwen, can you ask your friend to help me get a ticket too? Um, Gwen hesitated. I have to ask my friend. Maddie quickly nodded and added, If you can't, it's not a big deal. All right then, sorry to trouble you. Let me know if it works out. Okay, have fun tonight. Thanks, said Gwen. She raised her head proudly and waved to Maddie before leaving. When Damon got downstairs, Fiona was already standing there. She beamed at him as he walked down the stairs. She was overjoyed to see him. Some other guys checked out Fiona as they walked by. They liked what they saw, and at the same time, they were envious of whichever guy was lucky enough to have such a beautiful girl waiting for him. From Fiona's expression at this moment, the guys could tell that this girl cared a lot about whoever she was waiting for. When Damon got to the bottom of the stairs, Fiona ran over to greet him and excitedly said, Cupcake, you're really slow. I've been waiting for you for a long time. After saying this, she hugged Damon with her delicate arms. Damon found her irresistible. He had a hard time keeping his hands off her. When Fiona acted coquettishly, Damon could not resist her. The two of them walked excitedly to the library. When they got there, they saw that there were quite a lot of people in the library. Many students were studying hard for exams. Even if a seat at a table was empty, people left their books on the table to save their spots. After wandering around for a while, Damon and Fiona finally found a spot in the corner. University was full of stories about students flunking out and wasting their time and money. Even after people graduated from university, they still weren't guaranteed jobs. However, this didn't deter most students. Generally, students still tried their best to succeed. However, everyone had different goals. Regardless of this, exams were coming up, and people were studying hard. Luckily, the library at Meyerson University was very big. Although it was hard to find a seat in the library, Damon and Fiona eventually found a quiet corner. Damon took out his finance and history books to read, and Fiona took out her music books. But after reading for only a short while, Fiona lost interest. Looking at Damon was more interesting than reading. While Damon was studying seriously, 
Fiona was gazing at Damon without any restraint. As she looked at him, Fiona marveled that anyone could be so attractive. She had already seen Damon's serious look before, but she still wasn't tired of it. The more she watched him, the more fascinated she became. When she had first met Damon back in first year, he had been wearing knockoff brand clothing. Fiona found it funny that this guy was now her boyfriend. Fiona even remembered how disappointed she had been the first time she saw Damon. She hadn't even tried to hide the look of disgust on her face. Fiona was amazed by the twist of fate that had brought the two of them together. It seemed ridiculous. But as time passed, Fiona had fallen for Damon. Now Fiona was incredibly grateful to have Damon in her life. The world worked in strange ways. As Fiona thought about this, she could not help but smile. She asked, Cupcake, have you finished reading your book? She blinked her eyes innocently. Damon asked, Why? Fiona leaned her head on Damon's shoulder and said shyly, Let's go to the lakeside for a walk, okay? I want you to hold me. People who were in love had all kinds of impulsive thoughts. Damon had no choice but to agree, so he helplessly put away the book and then walked out of the library with Fiona. Many couples were walking together in the autumn evening. Damon and Fiona had just left the library. Fiona wanted to go for a walk by the lake. University students had the freedom to study when they chose to. If they wanted to take a night off and relax, they could. After all, university was an unforgettable time in the long journey of life. Many people tried to rush through these four years of life, but love could be hiding just around the corner. You never knew when you might meet someone who made your heart beat faster. When people get older, they might occasionally reminisce about university romances. Memories like this were beautiful. Night fell and the streetlights came on, lighting up the fallen autumn leaves. Fiona and Damon held hands as they strolled through the quiet evening. Fiona occasionally looked back at the footprints they were leaving behind them. She saw one big set of tracks and one small set. They walked leisurely side by side. Cupcake, do you think we'll be together until we grow old? No, Damon replied. When Fiona heard him say this, she was so angry that she hit his chest. Her expression was full of resentment as she asked, Why? Damon looked at Fiona seriously. He said lightly, Because we are not from the same world. Fiona rolled her eyes at him and scoffed. Okay, I am holding hands with a ghost or something right now. Damon stopped walking and looked at her. He said, That's not what I meant. I'm just repeating what someone else said to me. Fiona's pretty face instantly turned pale. She seemed to have realized something. With a trembling voice, she said, Who... Who said that? Your mother, Damon replied calmly. Fiona's delicate body trembled. She lowered her head and said softly, I should have known. Fiona's words didn't surprise Damon. He guessed that Karen must have broached the issue with her daughter before talking to him. Fiona must have been uncooperative, so Karen came up with a plan to talk to Damon face to face. Clearly, Fiona was determined to live her own life, and she had no qualms about fighting against her powerful mother. Fiona thought for a while. Then, she raised her head to ask nervously, Did she say anything out of line? Damon saw the look on Fiona's face. He couldn't bear to see her worry about him, so he reached out and took her in his arms. He said, No, you can rest assured. Oh, okay, Fiona replied. She knew that Damon must be lying. She knew her mother's personality, and she also knew Damon's. If her mother hadn't said something to him, he wouldn't have brought it up. Therefore, Fiona knew she had to do something, she held Damon's waist with both hands and said softly, Cupcake, you have to believe me. You are the only one I love. I don't want to live without you. Fiona wanted to comfort her boyfriend's worries. She reached up and kissed him sweetly. How could he reject such a beauty? She was throwing herself at him. Damon held her small waist with both hands as if he wanted to merge with her and become one. Fiona hugged him back tightly as if she was afraid of losing him. It was very late. Damon wanted to walk Fiona back to her dormitory. But they had to walk past the guy's dorms first, so she said goodbye to him there. Fiona was reluctant to part with him. She hugged him again and kissed him. Then she stood and watched Damon go into the building. Afterwards, Fiona turned and walked back to her own dorm. Back in Fiona's dorm, a few girls were sitting around discussing the car show that would be held at the exhibition center next weekend. When Maddie saw Fiona return, she smiled and said, Fifi, are you going to the exhibition next weekend? I heard that there will be a lot of new luxury cars on display. We're all planning to go and have a look. Fiona smiled and said, It does sound exciting, but I don't have a ticket. Tara, who was sitting on one side playing with an expensive SLR camera, said, Gwen said she might help us get tickets. She's not sure if she can yet, though. 
Fiona nodded her head and went to her desk to put down her bag and drink a cup of water. Just as she was about to call Damon to say goodnight, her phone rang. Fiona looked at the name on the call display and frowned slightly. She sighed and answered, Hi, Mom. She heard her mother's gentle voice on the other line. Karen said, Fifi, are you going to bed? What are you doing? Oh, I'm not going to sleep until later. Mom, what are you calling for? Karen was a little unhappy about Fiona's response. She asked, Do I need a reason to call you? Your mom cares about you. Did you go see that young man Damon tonight? Fiona gently said, I went to the library with him to study. Really? He didn't strike me as the type of guy who likes reading. Fifi, you have to know I have good intentions. Please, take my advice. Although you may think this guy is outstanding now, when you grow up, you will realize he is mediocre. The same thing happened to me with your dad. Fiona interrupted her mother. Don't talk about dad that way. My father is a good guy. At least I think so. She was very dissatisfied about what her mother had said. Karen didn't know what to say. She knew that you couldn't reason with a person who was in love. If she continued to push her opinion on Fiona, it would have the opposite effect. Karen realized that instead of fighting her daughter, she might as well pretend to go along with her wishes. That way, she could slowly guide her in a better direction. So, Karen took a step back and gently said, Okay, okay, okay. Since that's how you feel, I have no more objections. How about this? Let's hang out this weekend. Some of my friends are coming to visit. Why don't you bring Damon along? When Fiona responded, her voice had a trace of surprise. She asked, Mom, do you promise to drop the issue of me and Damon being together? Darren did not give her daughter a direct response. She said, Bring Damon to meet me and my friends first, okay? No, oh, okay, Fiona replied. She immediately felt happier. After chatting with her mother about school life for a bit, she said goodnight and hung up the phone. But Fiona's happiness did not last long. Previously, Karen had strongly opposed Fiona and Damon's relationship, but now she seemed to have changed her mind. She had even invited Damon to join them this weekend. Could it be that Karen had malicious intentions? Who knew what she might have planned? When Fiona thought about this, she was worried. It had snowed during the night, but by the time Damon woke up, the snow had stopped falling. The ground was covered with a layer of white and everything outside looked peaceful. The exhibition center near the university was about to hold a car show. The students from all the nearby schools were really excited. The Meyerson car exhibition was already big news. Many different manufacturers of luxury cars would be debuting their latest models. A lot of international companies would also be participating. Even though the students could not afford these luxury cars, they still wanted to go and take a look. Even just looking at these cars would be exciting. This event would undoubtedly liven up an otherwise boring weekend. The week before the exhibition, students were all running around looking for ways to get tickets. The situation was similar to that of the music festival. Damon did not try to get tickets. Will had already gotten passes for them. Furthermore, if he found a suitable car at the exhibition, he would buy it on the spot. A big event was happening at the exhibition center in Meyerson this weekend. It was a car show, and many high-end auto manufacturers would be debuting their latest models. The night before the car show, Fiona called Damon. She invited him to have dinner with her on the weekend. Fiona's mother, Karen, was hosting. Besides Fiona, Karen, and Damon, a few of Karen's old friends would be attending as well. On the phone, Fiona reminded Damon to dress appropriately. He needed to make a good impression. Fiona understood her mother. She knew that her mother did not think very highly of her boyfriend. She wondered why her mother had invited Damon to dinner. She suspected that her mother might be up to something. All in all, the situation made her a little worried. Fiona had told her mother all about Damon's positive qualities, such as how he had aced his SATs and how he was good at basketball. However, her mother was pragmatic and she had more life experience than Fiona. She understood how the world worked. Karen did not want to see her daughter make the same mistake as her. She wanted Fiona to marry a guy who could take care of her. She didn't take Damon's achievements seriously. Basketball skills were not as useful as business acumen. Doing well on one's SATs was important, but it was only the first step. Many successful business people hadn't even gone to university. If you came from a wealthy family, you had a leg up in the world. Such people had assets, and they could invest in business ventures. Karen wanted her daughter to marry a guy with means. Fiona was right to be concerned about what her mother might have planned for this weekend. Gwen waved the tickets in her hands and said, Beefy, the exhibition is in a few days. My friend from the Association of Young Entrepreneurs got tickets for everyone in our dorm. A few members of the association are going to check it out. 
I heard that some of them are even planning to buy cars today. Do you want to come with us and take a look? No, you guys go without me, Fiona said listlessly. She was low in spirits. She couldn't stop thinking about how her mother objected to her relationship. All right, then, Gwen said. She proudly put the tickets in her bag. Gwen didn't care if Fiona did not want to go. She knew other people who would want the ticket. Dorm 502 was also very lively at the moment. Theo and Hector were fiddling with an expensive camera. The camera had a huge telephoto lens. It looked like something a professional photographer would use, Damon asked. What are you guys doing? We are checking our equipment, Theo said excitedly, waving his arms. Xander got a few tickets to the exhibition. I heard there will be a lot of very expensive luxury cars on display, as well as the newest models of all the popular brands. Hector licked his lips and continued checking over his camera equipment. Theo was watching, and from time to time, he would mutter a few words of warning to Hector. Be careful, don't break it. It's very expensive. Quinn put down his book and watched Hector play with his high-end toy. Quinn didn't think he would ever be able to afford a camera like that. He watched with interest, but he didn't dare to touch the equipment. Xander had gotten Quinn a ticket for the exhibition. Quinn wanted to go and experience it for himself. He spent too much time reading, and he needed to go out more often. Damon, do you want to go too? It just so happens that Xander has a few more tickets, Theo said. No, I have something I need to do, Damon replied. He had his own plans. He couldn't tell these guys that he already had his eyes on a certain model of car and was planning to buy it the exhibition, could he? Saying such a thing could cause his roommate's jaws to drop. When Theo heard that Damon didn't want to go, he didn't push the matter. He took the camera back from Hector and continued to play around with his high-end toy. The next day was the weekend. When Damon woke up early in the morning, he found that it had snowed again during the night. The fresh snow had transformed the Meyerson campus into a beautiful fairy tale world. Because the city was close to the sea, the weather here was usually mild. It had been many years since Meyerson had seen snow like this. At this moment, the snow had stopped, but it lay thickly on both sides of the road. The fresh snow made the campus look even more romantic than it usually did. Damon woke up early to do some exercise. He went running on the trails behind campus. After eating breakfast, he returned to the dorm and found that Theo and Quinn had woken up early. They were about to set off for the exhibition center. Theo picked up his camera and prepared to leave. Xander was not in the dorm. Ever since he had reunited with Riley, he left the dorm early every day and returned late. He did not spend much time with the guys anymore. Before he left, Theo asked Damon if he wanted to come along with him. Damon shook his head to indicate that he did not want to go. After Theo and Quinn left, Damon packed up and prepared to leave as well. The girls in Fiona's dormitory were also preparing to set off. Tara and Maddie were going to the car show. They had originally wanted to go together as a group with Gwen, but Gwen shook her head and refused. She was going with a group of young and handsome men from the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. After Tara and Maddie left the dorm, Gwen picked up her designer handbag and prepared to leave as well. Before she went, she asked Fiona, Are you really not going to watch the car show? No, I'm not going. You go ahead. Fiona lay listlessly on the bed holding the teddy bear that Damon had given her as a gift. She felt a little depressed. Fiona thought that Damon was an outstanding guy, but her mother thought that he was childish and laughable. She could not rule out the possibility that her mother was planning to do something to Damon during the dinner that she had invited them to. Maybe her mother was planning to criticize Damon and embarrass him in front of everyone. Fiona wanted her parents to support her relationship. She hoped that her mother could be convinced. Fiona had not slept well these past few nights because she was terrified about what her mother might be planning. Her imagination was running wild. Hesitantly, she took out her phone and dialed Damon's number. When he picked up, she asked, Cupcake, what are you doing? Do you want to eat lunch together? Hi, Fifi. Sorry, I'm busy. I'm going to the exhibition. You aren't going? Damon asked. Some of the girls from my dorm went, but I'm not going. I still have some studying to catch up on. Call me later, okay? Fiona said goodbye to Damon and hung up the phone. She wondered why he hadn't invited her to the exhibition with him. She picked up the teddy bear again and suddenly pinched it angrily. She said indignantly, Cupcake, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you invite me to come with you? I wish I could punch you like this. She smashed the bear again. Gwen was waiting outside of the girls' dormitory. A stylish-looking Volkswagen car pulled up to the curb. Inside was a handsome man from the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. His name was Steve. He was fiddling with his phone. He held a cigarette in his other hand. Steve looked very cool. The girls who were walking by turned their heads to check him out. When Steve saw Gwen, he quickly opened the door and let her in. After she got in the car, she noticed another handsome young man sitting in the back seat. 
Gwen's beautiful face instantly broke into a sweet smile, and she asked, Marcus, are you also going to the car exhibition? Yes, my company is slowly getting on track, and I want to buy a car, Marcus said with some pride. He was also a member of the Association of Young Entrepreneurs, and he showed a lot of promise. This year, he had started a new project and had already obtained a few hundred thousand dollars in investments. He could not wait to buy a car. Therefore, he had seized the opportunity to go and take a look at what was on offer at the exhibition. What the heck? Steve suddenly cursed. He hit the brakes. What's wrong? Gwen asked. Gwen had just been picked up by her friends from the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. They were on their way to the exhibition center to check out the car show when Steve suddenly hit the brakes. Steve swore as he swerved to avoid a pedestrian. He narrowly avoided hitting the person. After this near miss, Steve skillfully flicked his cigarette ash out of the window and said in a deep voice, What's wrong with this guy? He practically jumped right out in front of me. He looks familiar. Gwen, isn't he Fiona's boyfriend? Why is he wearing such cheap-looking clothes? When Gwen heard this, she turned her head to look, and she saw that the person who Steve had almost hit was indeed Fiona's boyfriend, Damon. He had been crossing the road at a crosswalk, so Steve should have stopped for him. Damon had the right of way, and Steve had been driving like a maniac. Even so, Gwen frowned. She didn't like Damon. She softly said, Fiona is really blind. How can she like a guy who wears knockoff brands and walks around like he owns the place? Steve honked his horn twice. Damon ignored him. He did not want to bicker with the rude person who had almost hit him. As Steve drove past Damon, he threw his cigarette butt at him. The butt missed hitting Damon, though. Steve swore again and stepped on the gas. The three of them left Damon in the dust. Damon called a taxi at the school gate. Take me to the exhibition center. The cab slowly made its way towards the car show. The scale of this exhibition had attracted the attention of media outlets from across the country. The road to the event was congested with traffic, and there were people everywhere. The parking lots around the exhibition center were packed with cars. People had come to Meyerson from far and wide to see the luxury cars that would be on display. Damon's cab was stuck in traffic, and the driver muttered, Isn't this just a car exhibition? What's the big deal? I can't believe how many people are coming to buy cars. Damon looked at the road ahead and saw that he was about a mile away from the exhibition. Even so, driving was probably not much faster than walking. So he said, Driver, why don't you find somewhere to pull over and let me out? I'll walk from here. The sky was clear and there were no clouds for miles. The warm sun was shining on the ground and melting the thick snow. Damon walked and he quickly arrived at the huge exhibition center. When he entered the car show, he was surrounded by a sea of people. Many people were carrying cameras so they could take pictures of the luxury cars. The space was large and brightly illuminated. The event organizers had done an amazing job staging the place. Meyerson was a thriving metropolis, and this exhibition had attracted the attention of the media outlets from across the country. It was indeed worthy of all the hype. Damon put on his sunglasses and cap and walked into the building. When he saw all the gorgeous cars lined up next to each other on display, his jaw dropped. He had never seen anything so spectacular before. Damon spotted Theo not far away. Theo was tall, so he stuck out in the crowd. He was wearing a camera around his neck, and he looked like a professional photographer. Theo's height was intimidating, and the crowd parted before him to let him through. He went to take pictures of a nearby car. A gorgeous woman was modeling with the car. She started flirting with Theo. Many beautiful women had been hired to model at the event. These women were dressed in fashionable, sexy clothes. Theo wasn't the only person who was trying to take pictures of the cars and models. Many other people clustered around with cameras. Among them were the employees of various popular car magazines and websites, as well as professional photographers and enthusiasts. Some people had come to the exhibition purely to join in on the fun, and others were there on business. Of course, there were also people who had come to buy cars. Therefore, it did not seem out of place that Theo and his friends were up close taking pictures. In any case, most men at the event were just as interested in ogling the beautiful women as they were in ogling the cars. Wow, these cars are so beautiful, Hector exclaimed as his gaze fell on the various cars that were being displayed under the spotlights of the main stage. The car's exterior shone with an unusually dazzling luster. The display was very eye-catching. Theo and Quinn hurriedly turned their heads to look. Theo's tongue was practically hanging out of his mouth. Quinn's eyes were wide. These cars were really beautiful, but Quinn knew that he would never be able to afford one, even if he spent his whole life saving for it. I heard this car here is the latest model of Bentley's most luxurious SUV. It is a limited edition. The manufacturer made only 50 of these vehicles. 
The price is incredibly expensive, Hector explained to Quinn when he saw Quinn staring blankly at this luxury car. Although he couldn't afford it either, Hector was proud to be able to tell his friend about the car. At least this showed that he was experienced and knowledgeable. Theo laughed and said, I heard that the engineers who designed this car have already retired. That means that this car is the last of its line. Not only does it look very cool, but it also has a very high value for collectors. Quinn listened in a daze. None of these things really mattered to him. All these vehicles were far beyond his reach. The chaotic flow of people kept moving through the exhibition center. Theo took countless photos of the cars and the beautiful women who were modeling with them. Quinn's eyes were still fixed on the Bentley SUV. He was imagining what it would be like to own a car like this one day. Gwen, Steve, and Marcus were also in the crowd. They stopped in front of the Bentley SUV to take a look. The car's beauty and massive price tag attracted their attention. From where they stood, they could feel the luxurious energy radiating off the Bentley. Marcus looked at the Bentley with greed. He had a fanatical look in his eyes. Gwen looked at Marcus and said gently, You can drive, right? You would look very cool behind the wheel of such a car. If you own that car, many women would throw themselves at you. Gwen looked at the Bentley in awe. If Marcus bought his car, he could drive her around the campus in it. She would do anything to drive in that SUV. But when Marcus saw the hefty price of the car, he thought about how much money he had in his bank account and shook his head. He said, After I graduate from university and start working, I will definitely be able to afford this car within five years. How about we walk around and take a look at the other cars on display? There's a Sonata over there. I think that car suits me very well. It's beautiful, and very fashionable. However, he muttered to himself, Who am I kidding? My latest business venture received only a few hundred thousand dollars in investment and is still not up and running. Even if I sold my business, I wouldn't be able to afford that Bentley. As for buying this car within five years of graduating, even though Marcus was very optimistic about his business venture, he still felt that buying the SUV was an unrealistic dream. He had been showing off in front of Gwen. A trace of disappointment flashed across Gwen's pretty face when she realized Marcus could not afford the Bentley. It was understandable, though. Only a person from a very wealthy family would be able to afford such a car. So Gwen reluctantly looked away from the car and followed Marcus and Steve to look at the new model of Sonata. Everyone was at the Meyerson Exhibition Center's big car show. When Damon arrived, he was wearing casual clothing, a pair of sunglasses, and a cap. He looked like an average guy off the street. He walked over to the gorgeous Bentley SUV that was on display. A beautiful woman in a business suit walked over to greet him. She frowned and looked him up and down before saying, You must be here to look, huh? These cars are very expensive, but it's fun to dream, right? Move aside and let these people behind you have a look too. Some people are here to actually buy these cars. Don't get in their way. After saying this, the woman proudly raised her head and tried to shoo him away, but Damon was not listening to her. He kept watching the Bentley SUV in a daze. The car was dazzling. Then, he realized that the beautiful woman was also a celebrity. She looked great standing beside the Bentley. The vehicle was even more impressive in real life than it had been in the catalog. Damon had read about this car in magazines before. The Bentley was the car for him. There was a barrier around the car to keep people from coming too close. Damon walked around to the barrier's gate and signaled for the woman to open it for him. She was shocked. What are you doing? Get out of the way. Only serious buyers were allowed to touch the luxury cars. If someone was interested in buying a car, exhibition staff would allow them to have a closer look. If the buyer was serious, they could even test drive the cars. However, when the woman saw that Damon wanted to have a closer look at the car, she was shocked. Her face turned pale. If it wasn't for Damon's good looks, she would have called security sooner. Several other staff members also came forward to talk to Damon. The people in the crowd were stunned. They did not know what was happening. Then, everyone saw Damon take a gold credit card out of his wallet. He confidently pointed at the Bentley. You guys run my card and see if it works. I'm going to buy that SUV today. Not only were the staff members shocked, but so was the crowd of onlookers. This average-looking young man actually wanted to buy this luxury car on the spot? It was state-of-the-art. No one had expected such a turn of events. Everyone was impressed. Money talked. A beautiful model came over to see what was going on. She had seen a lot of things before, but she was still surprised. After getting over the shock, she smiled beautifully and stammered. Ah, is that so? Sir, are you sure you want to buy this car? Um, maybe you'd like to rest in our VIP room first. 
Manager, please get someone to help this young man. She winked at Damon. She had a playful expression on her beautiful face. She was flirting with Damon, but he did not pay attention at all. When she realized this, she was very disappointed. The manager turned out to be the woman in the business suit who had tried to shoo him away earlier. She felt awkward now that she had realized he was a serious buyer. She wiped the sweat from her forehead and put on a big smile. Ah, yes, of course. I'm really sorry, sir. I have made a mistake before. I'm really sorry. She took his credit card and opened the gate so Damon could come closer and have a look at the SUV while he waited. A few staff members quickly ran over and took the shiny gold credit card so that they could authorize it. After looking over the vehicle, the manager brought Damon to a private room so they could have a chat and finalize the details of the sale. The beautiful car model came with them and took the initiative to serve coffee. She was intrigued by how handsome Damon was. She winked at him and leaned in front of him as she refilled his coffee, offering Damon a good view of her cleavage. She wanted to attract his attention. The photographers in the crowd had also noticed what had happened. They all wondered who Damon was. He looked very out of place next to the luxurious cars and beautiful car models. After the people in the crowd got over their initial shock, everyone started to speculate about who Damon was. Was he the son of a wealthy family? Or perhaps he was a business tycoon? Theo, Hector, and Quinn noticed the commotion and rushed over to see what was happening. They saw a big crowd around the Bentley. Damon and the manager had finished the paperwork and returned to the SUV. Countless photographers were trying to take pictures of Damon. However, the exhibition staff had expected this to happen. They deliberately stood aside and let Damon take the spotlight. The security guards at the scene forcefully maintained order. They protected Damon's privacy by stopping people from photographing Damon's face. Only taking photos of his back was allowed. Quinn watched Damon's back from afar and felt that it looked somewhat familiar. Huh? That person looks a lot like Damon. Theo glanced over and then rolled his eyes. No way. He aimed his camera at a beautiful car model and took a few shots. It didn't make sense to Quinn either. How could Damon be a rich playboy? Quinn didn't believe that anyone he knew could be a wealthy tycoon. The growing crowd also attracted Gwen's attention. She followed Steve and Marcus to see what the fuss was about. She wanted to see the rich man who had spent so much money on a luxury car. From Gwen's angle, she could clearly see Damon's side profile, but she was having a hard time making out who he was. However, Gwen's eyesight was good. She thought that the young man who had just bought the Bentley looked familiar. Not only that, she even recognized the clothes he was wearing. She had seen someone wearing the exact same clothes that morning. Gwen trembled inside at this realization. She had always thought highly of herself. She couldn't believe she had made such a huge error in judgment. Could it be who she thought it was? But soon, Gwen decided that she must be mistaken. She laughed at herself. How could a student who dressed in cheap knockoff brands suddenly become able to afford a Bentley? It was as absurd as a frog turning into a prince. This was not a fairy tale, it was reality. Things like this didn't happen in real life. The staff were busy finalizing the details of Damon's purchase. The manager was all smiles now. Sir, if you want to take your car home today, do you mind waiting until the evening? After all, our exhibition is not done for the day yet. Moreover, our replacement vehicle won't arrive until tomorrow. Of course, if you insist on driving it away now, we will also cooperate. We will move the barrier for you. The manager was in charge. Although the organizers had stipulated that whoever bought a car must wait until the end of the day to drive it away, the manager knew she could bend the rules. She didn't want to lose a sale. Another staff member quickly added, Sir, do you have a license plate for your car? If you need insurance, we can help you get it. We can finish all the arrangements within two hours. The beautiful car model saw that Damon's cup was empty, so she personally poured him a refill. As she did, her ample chest brushed up against Damon's shoulder. Damon had just purchased the Bentley SUV at the car exhibition. A beautiful model was serving him coffee while he waited to finalize the details of his purchase. The woman refilled his cup. Thank you. Damon took a sip of his drink. When he saw the beautiful woman smiling at him and how respectful the employees were being to him now, he fully understood the benefits of having money. At this moment, he felt proud. He gently patted the table with his hand and said, Now about the car, I... Ding, ding, ding. His phone suddenly rang. It was Fiona calling. Damon picked up the phone and answered. Hello? Fiona's voice was quiet. Where are you? I'm still at the exhibition center. Remember to come over later. My mom plans to take us out for dinner at the Palace Hotel. 
The Palace Hotel was located in the center of Meyerson City. It was considered extremely high-end. Fiona was afraid that Damon would not be able to get there on his own, so she planned to meet up with him on campus. Then, they could go to the hotel together. Damon looked at the time and realized that it was already late in the afternoon. He still had to wait around for the car insurance and paperwork to be finalized. If he drove the car back to school, he would then have to drive all the way back downtown. It would take forever, and he would be late for dinner. It would be more convenient for him to head straight downtown from the exhibition center. Fiona was still on the other line, waiting for him to reply. Why don't we meet up at the Palace Hotel? I'm afraid I won't be able to make it back to campus in time. Do you know how to get there? I think I can find it. Damon knew the approximate location of the hotel. However, his new car had GPS, so he wouldn't have a problem finding the place. All right, don't be late, Fiona reminded him before hanging up the phone. Damon then turned to the manager and said, Can you hurry up with the paperwork? I want to take the car with me this afternoon. Sure, please wait a moment, sir. The staff quickly called for someone to bring the insurance papers. At this moment, Fiona was lying in her dorm, bored. She was watching a TV show on her tablet, but her mind was not on the show at all. She was distracted by other things. She felt extremely nervous in her heart. She was afraid that her mother would do something to embarrass Damon. Fiona knew her mother wanted her to break up with Damon. If her mother tried to pull anything tonight, she wasn't sure she could handle it. She was worried because her mother's standards were so high. Damon did not meet them. Fiona's family was wealthier than Damon's family, and this had unknowingly created a huge gap between the two of them. Although Fiona was still full of fantasies about love, she was not ignorant. You had to be smart to get into a famous school like Meyerson. She knew the difficulties she would face in the future. Her mother had provided a carefree and high-end life for her, and now she was used to it. She wanted a guy who could provide for her. Damon had a lot of potential. Unfortunately, her mother didn't agree. Fiona's mind was a mess. She turned off her show and went outside to kill some time. She wandered aimlessly around the campus for a while before heading off for dinner. Damon was still at the exhibition center. After going through the complicated procedures and filling in all the paperwork, the staff finally gave him the key to his new car. Damon then drove the car out of the building while trying to maintain as low a profile as possible. Along the way, he attracted the attention of many onlookers. The photographers all shot photos as he drove off. Naturally, Gwen, Theo, and the others all watched the Bentley leaving the exhibition center. Gwen was incredibly envious. She wondered what kind of person had been able to afford such a luxurious car. Theo, on the other hand, just kept taking pictures. He didn't care who had bought the Bentley. He knew that under normal circumstances, he would never be able to afford a car like that. He had to make do with taking pictures of it instead. Damon drove the car out of the exhibition center, leaving all the stunned onlookers behind in its dust. Clouds covered the sky once again, and it was snowing. The Bentley handled the weather well. Damon drove steadily onward. The SUV had large tires and bright headlights that pierced through the falling snow. The street ahead looked dreamlike and beautiful in their glow. Damon caressed the textured steering wheel. He could still smell the beautiful model's sweet perfume hanging in the air inside the car. The smell mingled with the aroma of the real leather upholstery. The whole situation felt somewhat unreal. Damon hadn't thought that he would own such a dreamlike car so soon. This car was out of most people's reach, even if they spent their entire lives saving for it. Did this mean that he had achieved success in life? Having a lot of money in the bank could not compare to the feeling of driving this car. Money alone did not turn heads the way this Bentley did. This car was something tangible, and Damon was the one behind the wheel. Driving it excited Damon. The powerful headlights of the Bentley penetrated through the snow. He steadily drove through the city. Fiona drove her own car to the Palace Hotel. She had a Mini. Today, in addition to her mother Karen, a group of family friends were joining them for dinner as well. After going in to greet her mother, Fiona walked out of the hotel room and called Damon. Are you here yet? I will be there soon. Damon hadn't realized how bad traffic in Meyerson was until after he bought a car. Obviously, everyone was in a hurry tonight. Horns kept honking all around him. The streets were packed with cars, and their headlights illuminated the falling snow. Damon noticed something strange. The cars around him were keeping their distance. A driver beside him, who had the right-of-way, politely let Damon go first. However, the driver muttered to himself, You think you're so special, huh? Just because you drive a luxury car? <sighs> Even if I saved my whole salary for a year, I still couldn't afford that car. Damn it, it's the latest model. 
Hurry up and drive. I don't want to get in a fender bender with you. Many other drivers on the road had sharp eyes. They knew that this Bentley was a new model. They couldn't help but crane their necks to see who was driving this luxury car. When they saw the young face behind the wheel, they couldn't help but exclaim, Wow, that guy is so young. He must be from a super rich family. Oh, the driver is so handsome. Damon's car attracted respectful and envious gazes from many people he passed. He was finally experiencing what it felt like to be a rich and powerful person. When he arrived at the Palace Hotel, a sharp-eyed staff member quickly ran over to park the car for him. Even though the staff member had seen a lot of luxury cars before, this Bentley really impressed him. He looked suspiciously at the owner of the car. When the staff member saw Damon's young face, he could not help but click his tongue in wonder. He guessed that Damon was from a wealthy family. After dealing with the car, Damon went to the hotel's entrance and saw Fiona waiting anxiously for him. When she saw him, her eyes lit up. She took Damon's hand and led him to her mother's table. Damon could tell how nervous Fiona was because she was gripping his hand like a vice. When he arrived at the table, he was surprised to see that there were other guests besides Fiona and Karen. A circle of people sat around a big table. They chatted happily. Fiona held Damon's hand and led him to her mother's side. Mom, Damon is here. Karen stared at him with piercing eyes. It was as if she could see through his heart. If it wasn't for the fact that he had already experienced Karen's piercing gaze last time they met, he might have felt really uncomfortable. The other people around the table all looked at him with scrutiny. In fact, many of them had watched Fiona grow up, but they did not know she had a boyfriend. They were surprised that she had brought a guy to this gathering. They were curious about what kind of guy had stolen her heart. Many of the family friends had brought their children with them. The young people joked with Fiona. Fifi, your boyfriend looks very handsome. This caused the crowd to laugh loudly and the atmosphere became relaxed. Karen pointed to the seats beside her. You two sit here. She had not given Damon a hard time yet. Perhaps this was indeed just an ordinary gathering. Fiona and Damon sat down next to each other and the older people started chatting. At this age, many women like to talk about their children. A middle-aged woman with blonde hair said, Karen, I heard Fifi is studying in Meyerson. Karen nodded her head with pride. Yes, originally she wanted to go to school in D.C., but I convinced her to go to Meyerson University. I think the school here is better. That's right, the people around her echoed. Many of them were alumni of Meyerson University themselves, and they had deep feelings for their alma mater. One middle-aged woman patted the boy beside her on the shoulder and said, Oh, Fifi still has you beat, Mike. Mike isn't the best student. He was studying at Boston University. I'm grateful that he is diligent, though. He partnered with his classmates and set up a bar. His business is doing pretty good. Not only did he pay off his student loans and rent an apartment, but he also bought a brand new car. Although it's not an expensive model, it still shows how hard he's worked. All the women around the table looked impressed. Damon and Fiona were having dinner with Fiona's mother, Karen, and her friends. One woman was bragging about how her son had opened a business. The woman's name was Judy. The other mothers all congratulated her. Although the middle-aged woman was showing off, her words were full of confidence. Her son, Mike, had worked hard, opened a business, and saved up enough to buy a car. He was clearly a capable young man. Mike blushed and stared at the table. He didn't have the confidence to speak up in front of all his mother's friends. Karen's eyes also lit up. She could not hide her admiration for the boy. Mike, you must continue to work hard and strive for greater achievements. Mike hurriedly nodded. Yes, I definitely will. As he spoke, he looked at Fiona. Damon had a vague feeling that Mike was trying to please her. Judy took the opportunity to strike while the iron was hot. Oh, right, Karen, do you remember back when we were neighbors? Mike always liked to play with Fifi. You kids should spend more time together. You used to be such good friends. I know Fifi is busy with school, but she could show Mike around Meyerson sometime, right? As Judy spoke, she patted his son's back. Mike was staring at Fiona. Fiona had played music since she was a child. Not only was she tall and beautiful, but she was also creative. She had once been Mike's childhood sweetheart. Naturally, he still had a crush on her. He felt hostile toward Damon. Judy was talking up her son. She patted him on the back. Mike finally mustered his courage to speak. Fifi, I live nearby. Why don't I come and visit you sometime when you're free? I have a lot of questions about Myerson that I would like to discuss with you. Damon couldn't believe Mike was saying this in front of him. Was he trying to steal Damon's girlfriend? He had even come up with a seemingly innocent excuse to meet with Fiona. 
How could she reject him in front of everyone? Fiona looked at Damon and hesitated for a moment. Sure, when are you free? She had to be nice in front of all her mother's friends. I'm free any time. Give me your number and I'll call you. I actually know a few people in the Myerson University Student Union. I can introduce you to some people from the Association of Young Entrepreneurs as well. If you have any difficulties on campus, you can call me. I can probably help you out. Mike's expression was full of pride when he mentioned the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. After all, to ordinary students, the association was very elite, even more so than the student union. Judy continued to praise her son. I've heard of that association before. The members in it are all students who have achieved success at a young age. A few famous CEOs from Fortune 500 companies started off as members. Karen nodded elegantly. Naturally, she knew about the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. In fact, she was once a member of the Meyerson branch herself. She knew all about the membership requirements. The association had very high standards, and only the most elite students could join. When the other mothers heard Karen and Judy praising Mike, they felt left out. A fair-skinned woman named Suzanne smiled at Judy and said, Your Mike hasn't done badly for himself, but my Tom is also doing great. He is studying politics and law at university, and he is a member of the student union. He even got a full scholarship. Tom was fair-skinned like his mother, and he wore glasses. He was not much shorter than Damon, and he had a charisma about him. He looked at Fiona, but found that Fiona was smiling shyly at her boyfriend. She was not even looking at him. His heart was broken, and at the same time, he hated Damon even more. A slightly plump woman named Tammy quickly said, My son Justin hasn't shown much interest in business. He just studies hard. Oh, I don't expect him to be an entrepreneur, but he was chosen to participate in an exchange program. He will go to study abroad. He had the choice to go anywhere in Europe, and he decided to go to King's College in England. Naturally, all the women around the table exclaimed in admiration at Tammy's words. Judy said, that's not bad. Our Mike plans to finish his undergrad, but he doesn't plan to go to grad school. After all, his dream is to become a CEO. Tammy, when Justin graduates, maybe he could work for Mike's company. Judy praised her son while taking a subtle dig at Justin. She was hinting that no matter how educated Justin might be, Mike could still be his boss. Tammy said, No need. Justin is studying biopharmaceuticals. He's not interested in the unethical work of running a bar. Judy only smiled. She did not argue with Tammy. Instead, she changed the subject. She looked at Damon and asked Fiona, Fifi, is this your friend? Oh, he's my boyfriend. His name is Damon. We met at university. Fiona was a little nervous, but she knew that this group of big-mouthed women were afraid of saying the wrong thing and embarrassing themselves. Judy spoke up first. She had a big, fake smile on her face. Any friend of Fifi's must be pretty special. You have to be outstanding to get into Myerson. Why don't you tell us about him, sweetie? Sure enough, Karen's plan was working. Fiona sighed to herself. She had known that this would happen sooner or later. She looked at her mother and saw Karen staring back at her. Karen prompted, Why don't you tell us about your boyfriend? Karen's expression was quite playful. It was obvious that she had been planning to ask this question all along. She wanted to see if Damon's achievements could compete with those of the other young men around the table. Under the table, Fiona tightly grabbed Damon's hand. Then she put on a smile and began to tell the woman about him. Damon was on the high school basketball team. He aced his SATs and got into Meyerson. The women sitting around the table were a bit surprised. They didn't care that Damon played basketball, but they were impressed to hear that he'd aced his SATs. These tests were proof of one's academic ability. Parents cared about good marks. However, someone disagreed. Playing basketball is not that special. Practically everyone plays some kind of sport in high school. Doing well on your SATs is okay, but it's not uncommon. I know a lot of students who aced their college entrance exams. Anyone with half a brain who studies hard can pull it off. Everyone looked to see who had spoken. It was Judy. Her tone had sounded a little strange. Obviously, she had a problem with Damon. She had looked him up and down and decided that she didn't like him. Her son, Mike, was a man with real promise. He had connections with the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. How could a nobody like Damon compare to him? It didn't matter how smart Damon had been in high school. That was all in the past. His achievements weren't as impressive as Mike's. After all, Mike was a successful businessman. Suzanne spoke next. Fifi, is he in any clubs at the school, or has he joined the student union? Has he thought about studying abroad? Fiona shook her head. Damon wasn't a part of the student union. He wasn't even a resident assistant at the dorms. As for studying abroad, Damon's family couldn't afford to send him. 
he would have to earn a scholarship or take out student loans to pay for it himself. Suzanne wasn't finished yet. <sighs> Getting into a good university isn't the be-all and end-all. You need to continue striving for more. If you don't continue pushing yourself, your future won't be bright, Mike quickly added. There was a kid in my high school who also aced his SATs and got into a good university. However, later on, he was caught stealing students' computers and selling them. Then he was expelled from the school. I heard he washes dishes in a restaurant now. Although Mike was clever for his age, he was being very rude. When he hated someone, he did not try to hide how he felt. His words had been very aggressive. Damon was in a difficult position. He wanted to stand up for himself, but he was worried that he would end up sounding disrespectful. Just as he was thinking about how best to reply, Karen spoke. Actually, statistics show that not many students get an A-plus average on their SATs. Doing so is quite exceptional. Although she did not approve of Damon, she decided to spare him for her daughter's sake. By speaking up for him, she was in fact speaking up for her daughter. The other mothers also felt that Mike's story had been inappropriate, so they agreed with Karen. Mike, however, was unconvinced. He muttered, What's so great about acing your SATs anyway? I don't believe that his talents surpass mine. His words were full of confidence. However, Mike could also back up his claims. His business had made him enough money to pay off his student loans, rent an apartment, and buy a car. The atmosphere around the table was a little awkward. Then someone changed the topic to travel and careers, and everyone relaxed once again. Karen was not paying much attention to Damon anymore, but Fiona still felt like she was walking on eggshells. She didn't like seeing her boyfriend being attacked like that. Now she understood why her mother had invited them to dinner with her friends. Karen was clearly trying to introduce Fiona to some young men who she approved of. Compared to these guys who had careers and achievements, Damon looked inadequate. Seemingly, all he could do was play basketball. Fiona wished she could tell her mother about Damon's positive qualities. For example, he was a great singer, and he was also a fierce fighter. However, her mother had very traditional tastes. What use would it be to tell her these things? She would just say that singing didn't pay the bills, and that fighting would land a person in jail. Damon was good at video games too, but Karen would think that that was even more a waste of time. Fiona felt uncomfortable when she thought of this. She felt sorry for her boyfriend. Damon must be feeling the same way. No one liked to sit around and be insulted, right? These people were so arrogant. Judy tried to bring up the topic of her son a few more times. She wanted Fiona to pay more attention to Mike. She even asked Mike to toast Fiona and Karen. Mike did not want to disappoint his mother, so he raised his glass and said a few appropriate words. Auntie Karen, I hope things continue to go well for you at work. Fifi, good luck with your studies this year. Suzanne was not willing to let Mike snatch all the limelight. She urged Tom to make a toast as well. She wanted Fiona to notice him too. As expected, Tom knew just what to say. His speech was even better than Mike's. When Suzanne heard it, she beamed. Compared to Tom and Mike, Damon was at a disadvantage. After the toast, Tom gave Damon a disdainful look. He had no respect for him. He felt that he was better than him. On the other hand, Mike was the real competition. Mike had already started a business and bought himself a car. Additionally, he had connections with the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. Whether Tom wanted to admit it or not, Mike's achievements were impressive. Tom hoped he would be able to get a scholarship next year too and prove that he was just as successful. The women encouraged a bit of healthy competition between their children. Karen saw how outstanding Tom and Mike were, and she wondered what her daughter was thinking. Judy finally changed the topic. Karen, when is the 100th anniversary celebration of Meyerson University? Karen then remembered that the anniversary was coming up soon. However, she didn't remember the exact date, so she shook her head. I am not sure about the details. I do remember seeing a post about it in our alumni group, though. Damon and Fiona were having dinner with Fiona's mother Karen and some of her friends. The women had all been boasting about their children's achievements. Now the conversation took a turn and they started discussing Meyerson University's upcoming 100th anniversary celebration. Judy took a sip of her wine. I think the celebration is coming up soon. It is supposed to be very grand. I'm sure that when the time comes, you will receive an invitation, Karen. As for the rest of us, uh, I'm not sure if we are important enough to be invited. For alumni of Meyerson University, the 100th anniversary celebration was undoubtedly a huge occasion. The university would invite successful alumni to join the celebration so their life achievements could be recognized. Anyone who received an invitation would be proud. The women kept discussing the topic. They speculated about who would be invited. 
The women chatted and chatted, and before they knew it, the dinner was over. Karen went to pay the bill, and they all left the restaurant. When they got outside, they saw that it was still snowing. The bus station was a few hundred yards away, and it was even more difficult to get a taxi. Moreover, many of Karen's friends were in town visiting, so they didn't have cars. Karen made a few phone calls and finally managed to arrange for some cabs. But after counting, they realized that there was not enough space in the cabs for everyone. There were still too many. What should they do? Who else has a car? Karen asked. They all looked at each other. Most of them had come by taxi. No one had expected it to snow so much tonight. This was a problem. Everyone was at a loss for what to do. Suddenly, Damon turned to Fiona. Wait, I have an idea. When he said this, Karen and her friends all looked at Damon in surprise. They were curious to know what he was thinking. Fiona eyed her boyfriend suspiciously. Damon signaled to a hotel staff member. Fiona wondered if he wanted the staff to try to call a taxi. Although Damon had remained quiet throughout dinner while everyone compared him to Mike and Tom, he was eager to redeem himself. He would undoubtedly score a lot of points with Karen and her friends if he could sort out the ride situation. Damon said a few words to the hotel staff and a man ran off toward the parking lot. In the distance, through the falling snow, everyone saw a large black SUV driving in their direction. It drove across the parking lot toward them. The SUV's tires left deep tracks in the snow. The SUV was an impressive size. It was a sexy looking vehicle. The headlights were dimmed, so their glare didn't blind the group. When the SUV stopped at the entrance of the hotel, everyone stared at it in awe. They marveled at its gleaming black exterior. This vehicle could clearly handle the weather. It gave off a feeling of safety and comfort. Even Karen was impressed. She could tell that the SUV was brand new. The staff member hopped out of the driver's seat and Damon tipped him. He looked very capable standing in front of the black Bentley. Snowflakes were sticking to his jacket. The whole scene looked like something from a dream. Damon had a faint smile on his face. Good thing I drove here today. There's no need to wait for another taxi. I can fit you all in. The interior of the Bentley was spacious. Although it had only five seats, it would not be difficult to fit seven people inside. Damon ignored everyone's surprised expression. He smiled at Fiona. Karen, you didn't drive here today, did you? Why don't you hop in and I'll take you back to your hotel? Fiona's eyes widened as she looked at the Bentley logo on the hood of the SUV. Damon was holding the door open for them to get in. He had a smile on his face, and he looked especially attractive in the falling snow. She felt dazzled. Fiona never imagined that Damon could pull off such a shocking performance for her mother. She felt incredibly lucky to have him. He had proved to everyone that he was not useless. He was brilliant. However, he was acting very nonchalant, like this wasn't a big deal at all. He was being incredibly cool about the whole situation. He looked very charming standing in the snow in front of that Bentley. Even Karen was looking at Damon with surprise. This stunning luxury car didn't jibe with her mental image of him. However, it did seem to be his vehicle. The other people in the group started speculating about who Damon might really be. Mike, Tom, Judy, and Suzanne all looked like they had just seen a ghost. They had assumed that Damon was just an average student from an average family. However, they all knew the value of this luxurious Bentley SUV. The price was not something an average student could afford. Damon seemed too young and inexperienced to drive a car like this. Regardless of his age, how could he afford to buy this car? Because they had all thought so lowly of him, the shock of this discovery was especially great. Damon quietly stood by the car. No one said a word. The snowflakes continued blowing in the wind. All right then, since Damon brought his car, everyone else should squeeze in, Karen said. She was a tough lady. She had been stunned for a moment, but quickly regained her composure. Her tone sounded different than before, though. After all, Damon had caught her totally off guard. Mike and Tom looked at Damon with jealous expressions. The appearance of the Bentley embarrassed them. They felt like Damon was making a joke of them. They had tried to humiliate Damon, but instead, they had ended up humiliating themselves. He had made them look ridiculous without even trying. Until now, they had considered him unsophisticated. Mike could not take it anymore. He was insanely jealous. <laughs> A Bentley is pretty impressive, but I doubt it's yours. Why are you acting so arrogant? Everyone felt that he was out of line. However, Mike was only a student, so the older people just laughed it off. However, when they thought about what he had said, they felt that he must be right. Indeed, no one believed that Damon had paid for this SUV himself. If it was really his vehicle, his parents must have bought it for him. All that proved was that his family was rich. 
It couldn't compare to starting from scratch and earning your own money like Mike had done. If that was the case, Mike still had Damon beat. After all, what the others cared about was their children's ability to build something for themselves. Living off one's parents' money was nothing to boast about. Tom seized the chance to put in his two cents. That's right, I have a few classmates who drive Ferraris to school. Their parents give them huge allowances every month. It must be nice. Clearly, Tom was jealous too. And although his SUV is quite big, I'm afraid it will be very uncomfortable if we squeeze seven people into it. I can walk back. Anyway, I can't bear to spend your parents' money, Damon. Fiona wrinkled her brow. She wanted to stand up for her boyfriend, but she could not find any words to say. At this moment, a young man walked out of the hotel. When he saw Damon, he did a double take. His eyes immediately lit up. Excuse me, may I ask, are you Mr. Walker? Everyone was stunned. Mr. Walker? The young man saw that Damon was confused and quickly walked over to introduce himself. Hello, Mr. Walker. You may not know me. I am Marvin Bobbs from the KC Games Human Resources Department. Mr. Walker, I heard that you were having a problem. So this young man was an employee of KC Games. No wonder he knew Damon. Damon smiled and nodded. I am having a problem. We're having a hard time getting cabs because the weather is so bad. We don't have enough space to give everyone a ride. Look. Do you need another vehicle? No problem. Marvin seemed to have things under control. He waved at one of the hotel staff. Hey, hurry up and get a car for these people. Quick, quick, quick. The hotel staff member nodded and ran off. Not long after, he returned driving a white Audi. Marvin said respectfully, Mr. Walker, the hotel can loan you this car for the evening. Do you need a driver as well? Damon smiled. No need, we can drive ourselves. Thank you. Mr. Walker, you are too polite. I'm glad I could help you. Have a safe journey. Marvin had a lot of respect for his boss. The employees at KC Games were treated very fairly. Damon nodded. Marvin opened the car door for them. He then gestured for some of Karen's friends to get in. Tom and Mike, who had been mocking Damon just moments before, looked at him in a daze. The scene was so surreal. They wondered if they had been hearing things. Had this man actually called Damon Mr. Walker? Who was this young man anyway? No one knew. Karen took a long, hard look at Damon. It was not the first time in her life that she had been surprised. Karen had clearly heard the young man calling Damon Mr. Walker. She looked at Damon's bright smile again and realized that she might have underestimated him. She admitted that she might have made a mistake. Her daughter's boyfriend was not the person he appeared to be. He had put on a good act. Karen wondered what else she didn't know about her daughter. She had even had Damon investigated, but she had not discovered any of this. Karen was very interested in him now. Damon, why don't you and Fifi drive back to school together? You can drop Tom and Mike off on your way. Damon nodded. Okay. Then Karen got into the driver's seat of the Audi. A group of her friends got in the car as well, and she slowly drove off. Another of Karen's friends took Fiona's Mini. Fiona, Tom, and Mike all got into Damon's car, and he started to drive. For a while, no one spoke. It seemed like they were still digesting what had happened. Even Fiona did not know what was going on. Since when did her boyfriend have a brand new Bentley and get called Mr. Walker? And who was that guy who had shown up in the nick of time to help them? Finally, Mike mustered up his courage and asked, What do you do? I opened a small company and it makes me a living. The tone of his conversation was more relaxed. Damon seemed even more mysterious than ever before. Mike wondered what else this average-seeming guy was hiding from them, but he no longer dared to speak. Or rather, he was too ashamed to speak. It was strangely quiet inside the SUV. Tom touched the upholstery. It still had the smell of a new car. Tonight's experience felt really melodramatic. After dropping Mike and Tom off at their places, Damon took Fiona back to campus. She was rarely quiet around him, but she didn't say much on the drive back. She kept looking at him as if she wanted to say something, but then she stopped herself. She got out. Some people turned their heads to look at Fiona. Then, their gazes followed the Bentley as it drove away. When they saw the girl who had gotten out of the Bentley walking past, they all came to a realization. It wasn't unusual to see an extremely beautiful girl getting out of a luxury car. This happened a lot on campus, so they were not surprised. However, that car was pretty impressive. Some of them started speculating about who was driving the car. He was probably some ugly, middle-aged, rich dude. 